four, three, two. Hello, people of the internet. I never did. Classic. That's me. Hello, Hila. Welcome to H3 After Dark. Nice Thank to have you. you. It's uh, December 8th. In my, my, how the time rolls by, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm so starstruck to be on my favorite podcast. Yeah? I mean, I listen all week, and then I get to be on it. Well, that's nice. <laughs> you know, I am available to you for more uh, purposes. Than, uh, oh, you're pretty busy. Yeah, well, I make time for my fans. <laughs> <laughs> I always make time for my fans. You know I love my fans. Anyway, guys, welcome to here. Uh, we actually have sponsors today, so let's give it up. Woo! Let's go! Woo! The Hexclad and Gamer Sups, wow. who we love. Wow. We, we love them. They keep us fed and, and drink. One keeps us fed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the, the pillars of life. Yeah. Um, we have a fun show, of course, uh, as usual. When do we ever disappoint? <laughs> Other than this entire week. But that's also, i uh, sorry, yeah, that's a crickets moment. I'm just being a little sensitive because people have been mad at me for, uh, for some stuff I did this week. Anyway, uh, we have, um... The Live Forever guys calling into the show at two. Brian Johnson. That's so exciting. Actually, I'm all, I'm both like I had no idea that was happening until today. I I have I there is a genuine curiosity. Mm -hmm. at, on surface level, it's like this dude's fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But like there's also yeah. I think some legitimate scientific pursuit going on there. Yeah. You know? It's complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. He's a complicated. But I'll tell you what else is weird. Brian Johnson. You know who else is named Brian Johnson? Lever King. Yes. Yeah, I was watching. And have we, have we tried to get them in the same room? Have we had any progress on that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no progress on that. Have we reached out to Lever's people? That would people? be so good. Yeah, that'd though. be great. And that I mean, they so would good. have so much to talk about. Yeah. Because you know, Bri the rich Brian Johnson would be like. Well, he, they're both knows, rich. That's true. I think this one we're talking to is probably richer, though. Mega rich. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's like mega rich. The Apparently, mega rich Brian will tell rich Brian. He's got the science. He's like, bro, you're fucking nuts. Yeah. And then Lover's like, here, eat, bite into these raw testicles. <laughs> 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 um, so he's going to call in. I'm looking forward to that. Also, big announcement, guys. The live show is coming next weekend, and the polling is up. <laughs> guys, go on Twitter. Is this tweet it? pinned, love? It's already next weekend. No, it's not, but I'll pin it right now. Yeah, so the tweet will be pinned. They call them dumps. The voting is open for the Streamies 2020... Steamies 2023. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, boy, we've got some great nominees some great categories and we're all so so excited this Sunday or no next Sunday I mean mm -hmm. is our ultimate uh final show of the year YouTube's wow hottest oh night. it's YouTube's hottest night baby yes that's, so yes. that's what everyone says about it how is it already December it's crazy it's nuts actually Ela's birthday's next week too yeah wow oh. So you'll be 36? 30. No. You're 36? Will be. Oh, oh, right. That makes sense. Yeah. What'd you think? 36. I thought 37 for some reason. Lucky. I wish you, I was You could convince me. I'm honestly not 100% sure. No, I think because sure. I'm 38, so you would be turning 36. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, you're young. I, You know what I mean? I like them young. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like we're... Clip like, that. I can't even... Should oh, I button that? It's a cat. No, I was going to clip that. Like, no. You're gonna clip. <laughs> I never know anymore. I feel so old, but I don't know. I'm a, I know that it's young, too. They say 50s is the new 20s. Yeah. But you know who says that? People in their 70s. People? And, well, and Brian Johnson, <laughs> the man we're about to speak with. Yeah, Brian right. Johnson apparently says he's 25. I don't buy it, though. I've seen his face. I mean... Uh. Yeah. I don't. I don't buy it. He's not twenty. He, he. I mean, he looks like he's forty. Well, you can tell that to his face. And in I will. Twenty minutes. <laughs> if that is your real face, Brian. How old is he? 
<laughs> uh, he is 46, I believe. Immortal. Okay, he's yeah, looking 46. pretty good for 46. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think he looks incredible for 46. I didn't realize. His body's yeah. nuts. He's like yeah. jacked. Yeah, he's really jacked. So I guess we should get right into it because he's going to call in 20 minutes. And he seems like the oh, kind of wow. guy who's like, I'm here. It's 2 o'clock. I have 20 minutes <laughs> to give you. And then I'm leaving. Did he give us a heart out? He did he, not. He didn't actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And he, he expressed excitement. Yes. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I feel like you guys are not excited enough about that. I am. I'm excited. Okay. He's an interesting guy. And, and I'll his say, team rocks, they seem. And I'll say this. He seems like a good sport, too. Yeah. Like, he seems like he's a nice guy and a good sport about everything. So I, I think we'll have a fun combo with him. Actually, one before we get into that, which we, we should get on it pretty quickly here, I want I had one other thing I want to say about the live show. Just a reminder for those in attendance, yeah. there will not be a dress code enforced, mm. but formal wear is highly encouraged. It's the spirit oh, of the man. night. It's the it's, hottest night. It's YouTube's sexiest night. You don't want to be I coming not, not looking sexy. Dance. Looking like a schlub. That We're, being said, wait, also... Wait, my mom was asking me what to wear, and I was like, just anything. So gowns. Should I? Should well, I... <laughs> okay, I was going to say, also, I also want to emphasize next to that, that this is all super expensive and also don't feel you really don't need to feel yeah like i said not enforced doing that non enforced won't look down on you <laughs> if you don't feel like you'll not be up. judged please you'll not be judged but yeah. it's just it's it's more like dressing up in a costume than actually uh it's for formal. fun if you have a nice outfit at home you know what i mean then put that on we'll we'll all be in tuxes and stuff uh, mm -hmm. up on stage and so if you want to get into the spirit of the night that's the way to do it let's not talk about making money Yes. I know my mom is planning on wearing Teddy Fresh. She already told me. She's like, I'm just gonna wear my Teddy Fresh. Yeah. Like, yeah. But she gonna be in? Is she in gonna... the crowd? Yeah. Okay. Cause she can be backstage. She doesn't need to be in the crowd. Oh, gotcha. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. I don't know nothing about numbers. Regardless, um, the polling is up. How many votes do we have in so far, Ian? It's, we, we've got quite a bit already. But yes, go over to, go over to Twitter. It's pinned. It should also be in the comments probably as well. And um, we have uh, 30,000 votes. So wow. Wow. All right. Wow. The, we are not starting the show until there's 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> and we need a million likes also. So start smashing that like button right 30, now. 30,000? That's a lot. 30,000? That is yeah. a lot. How many do we have last year? Do, do we have uh, access to that historical record? Last year uh, looks like 107,000. Whoa. Oh. Okay. But I don't think we did the big push. I think oh we only pushed God. this at the end. Of Stavros. Of Stavros' episode. Yeah, it was kind of a soft launch, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a much harder launch today, so yeah, okay. get your votes in. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting comment. A few of my coworkers never heard of Teddy Fresh until the collab with MTG, but knew about the H3 podcast, so I couldn't stop raving about TF. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, Love you. That's Love your awesome. ass. Yeah. Oh, that's talk exactly to me, baby. what I was hoping that would happen. <laughs> that actually makes me so happy. I think I have... um bronchitis or something i think i might need to see the doctor because like great i can't stop is that is that um oh. contagious yes yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. well i don't have a fever or feel bad in any way i just have this cough that's not oh. getting it's not improving and it's very phlegmy and it i think that happens. feels bad i mean you were sick recently right because yeah. I, i'm kind of having that right now too yeah. to be honest but I like how, last week how it was long the same with our boys theodore had a cough forever after he was sick oh somebody says will there be a tf sale at the live show you know there will be there, you know will, there be. will be fans be ready because we are doing our our usual <laughs> sample sales insanely marked down and frankly all the best items a lot of them are sold out a lot of them are favorites there's going to be a huge variety of stuff and they're all going to be mega marked down for our fans it's a fan service we love them let and, the conversation uh, begin this this venue is massive so i understand the the merch booth will be bigger and more mm. uh accommodating mm. Yes, and there's going to be uh, significantly more line management going on than there was at the last live show. If people were in attendance and remember what a mess it was out in the <laughs> lobby, because there was a million people getting in line, and it was just kind of a free for all. Uh, so we're on top of that. This it's time. a lot more organized yeah. this time. Yeah, we're on top of it. Bronchitis itself isn't contagious, but some of its causes are. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. It's just when you have shit in your lungs. If your bronchitis is caused by a virus, you can be contagious for a few days to a week. What are the symptoms of bronchitis? Let's see if I have that. 
They are. It's just kind of a buzzword, you know? <laughs> Why don't you ask uh, our guest when he calls in? He seems like the type of guy. <laughs> He's not a doctor, but probably one sitting next to him. He probably doesn't get sick <laughs> ever. Right. That's a good question for him. That is a good question. <laughs> Runny, stuffy nose, low grade fever. I don't have a fever. Chest congestion. You don't have a stuffy nose either. Wheezing. No, my nose is clear. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It's not weird. It's just the stuff That's, is lingering. It's exactly what. But it's been a week and of no improvement. No. Yeah. Weaseling, wheezing, or whistling while breathing. No. A cough that may produce yellow or green mucus. I am producing green mucus. <laughs> Feeling run down and tired. That's so me. <laughs> That's so me. Um, also, besides Brian Johnson calling in, we have huge breaking Selena Gomez drama. <laughs> um, it is hot. It is fresh. Everybody is buzzing about this Selena Gomez drama, and Olivia is going to take our hand and lead us to Educate the us. promised land of Selena Gomez. T mm -hmm. just got engaged, and he's the one who showed me H three. Let's go. Let's go, Let's Cheryl. Go, husband. Cheryl Beeler. Is that that last name about to change? Beeler. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, her last name is Beeler. She says she's getting married. Or is she already married? Let's see. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you know that women can keep their own last name, Ethan? Well, with a name like Beeler, I thought that maybe I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Beeler. What's wrong with Beeler? Nothing. <laughs> Beeler! I feel like you get, I don't know. If you were like, wanted to bully someone, you could like, Beeler! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if she's like five. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Beeler? <laughs> eh. well, you can say anybody's name like that. <laughs> that wrong. Bzzz, why are you annoying, Beeler? <laughs> like a bee in my ear. <laughs> well, if she wasn't changing her name before, now she is. <laughs> Beeler. Somebody said it uh, might be pneumonia. That's a good guess. Let's oh, see. Oh, great. That might be what I was thinking. Maybe of. lupus. Cough, Maybe which may produce lupus. green. Fever, sweating, cha shaking, chills, no. Shortness of breath, no. Rapid, shallow breathing, no. Sharper, stabbing, chest pain, no. Loss of appetite, low energy, fatigue, yes. Oh, uh, there it is. You got it. Except loss of appetite, that's... <laughs> that's when I'm really fucked up. When I don't feel like eating, that's when life is really... I need to see a doctor at that point. <laughs> you know. Right. But anyway... People are saying... Uh, they could bully you for Klein in the exact same way in the chat. Klein. It's a Klein, the clown. How do you know that that's Klein. what they sound because, like, Dan? Because they, they stretched out all the vowels. Klein. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Sword love. Woo, swerve. I'm going to swerve into oncoming traffic. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a double homicide murder into this oncoming traffic. Swerve love. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little. That's a. Little that's a innovative. I mean, I did get you bullied. Heard that? I, yeah, I got some bullying for my last name when I was a kid, but uh, no oncoming traffic jokes. That's, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing Swerve it different. Love. <laughs> what kind of bullying did you get? Uh, geez, what would they say? Uh, you know, frankly, they were always really dumb. I mean, I'm talking like elementary school, and in the '90s too. Not that it's different now. Not, uh, I don't know, but. Uh, Swerd, Swerd Gay. Cause it's oh, because of the love? That is pretty gay. bad. That's so that's pretty bad. I'm telling you, it's bad. Swerd Gay. And I told them it was bad at the time, but bullies don't really, uh, they don't care for feedback. Swerd you know Gay. Yeah. That's crazy. That you sound kind of lame saying that to me, just saying. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Were exactly you like, that tone. Were you like, Bully them right back. You, were saying. you like, ew, homophobia is never okay. <laughs> yeah. It was woke. And if woke you didn't, it's why seven. not? <laughs> and you were right. <laughs> no, I'm just telling that you're gay. I didn't know that. I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> when am I gonna get a hold of Jesse? I Somebody like said uh, Dan Turdlove. That oh. would have been way better. Oh, that's I never. I, I, that wasn't one that I ever got. Turdlove, the poop eater. <laughs> My bullies weren't. They weren't the smartest. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, fucking morons. Where are they now? Probably crying. Single, lonely, yeah. destitute. Idiots, morons, <laughs> losers, dumbass. Absolutely fucking probably passed out in their own shit and filth. Wondering, <laughs> they're thinking about Dan. <laughs> and how well Dan's- God, I hope so. Oh God, I hope so. I hope that my bullies are, you know, being burned okay, maybe, alive in yeah. their minds. Right, mentally. In mentally. Minecraft. Right. 
I hope they're being burned alive in Minecraft. Burning the witch. Falling in lava and losing all their diamond armor. Idiots. Oof. Dumbasses, morons. Brutal. I didn't wish that. That's crazy. <laughs> That's days. rough. <clears throat> Alright, so, um... Let's see here. We should get up to, um... Up to speed on Brian. Yeah, let's get up to speed on Bri Bri. Yeah. <laughs> Bri Bri. So, Brian Johnson, you guys have probably seen... I've been talking about him for a while off and on. He's a fascinating character, and I've seen a lot of people on the internet discussing him. Mm. Um, he's 46. He claims multiple parts of his body have the biological age of 18. He has a team of 30 doctors and spends $2 million a year trying to reverse the effects of aging. He uh, built a mobile payment startup called Braintree, which also owned Venmo. The company was oh. purchased by PayPal in eight, uh, for $800 million in 2013. Mm. He said that during that period in his life, he was chronically depressed and would binge eat. So he's an ultra wealthy and I guess retire or not he's not working in the traditional so was he not always super fit No, actually actually interestingly I saw the pictures of him when he was like in tech and all that he looks completely different mm. and a little overweight, too oh. hmm. Which is not which is really something I I Do we have a pic of him from before? There's a link a little lower in that right up. <coughs> uh, which number number eight. Thank you. Yeah, here he is before, um, God, he looks so different, you guys. You're not even going to recognize him. Go, Bri Bri. <laughs> Go, Bri. My name is Pat that. Ryan. Welcome to Chicago Founder Stories here at 1871, Chicago's new digital startup hub. Look at him. Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Third founder what? Stories. Yeah. Uh, we're Wait, sold what? out once again. And so That's we him? Yeah. It for people who what? are able to get here tonight. If you haven't seen the He's first amazing. two, we did, uh, get on with Grubhub it. Founder he actually looks Since like younger. Than, and we that's him. That's him. That's that's a, that is him. Oh He's just God. some dork. I mean, oh, and I mean yeah. that with peace and love, of course. He doesn't look overweight or anything, but just no. normal. He, he's average build, you know. Healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Healthy. Yeah. It's fine. Here. Fab.com, Uber, and we power their credit card payments. Isn't that crazy? I huh. think that's a totally different that person. Payment? So what year is this from? Because yeah. because he looks the same age or potentially even younger. I would I might even say, although. Uh, well, it was age. posted six years ago. Um, I don't know if this was when it was recorded. What year uh, is it? Probably 20? then. It's yes. probably six years ago. Yeah, probably. Okay. So that's pretty interesting, right? Yeah. Um, Bri Bri is... Um, <laughs> currently, he takes 111 supplements a day. He stops <laughs> eating at 11 a.m. No. He does, like, hardcore intermittent fasting. Okay. Stops eating at 11 a.m. He eats exactly 2,250 calories every day. At what hour? He, this, is, this dude probably wakes up at like 4 a.m. kind of shit. Oh, my God. You know. He says, every calorie has to fight for its life. There's not a single calorie in my entire life protocol that exists for any reason other than serving an objective in the body. Wow. He calls this whole regiment and uh, scientific... Uh, journey project blueprint here's a super cut of his morning routine we need to send him and son's chocolate and see I don't think he he'd can... eat it <laughs> I think he's like he's so fucking hardcore <laughs> like I, I almost feel like it well let here I'll, I'll play I measure my inner ear temperature every day I do this as a safety and efficacy check for various therapies we're doing if I'm running hot then we know it's an indicator of something. The temp this morning was 96. So my body runs around uh, three, three degrees Fahrenheit, roughly cooler than normal. Most people are 98.7 thereabouts. I run around 95.5 or 96. It's a result of my dietary protocol. I'll flip on this UV light. This is 10,000 lux at 12 inches. I turn this on and I usually just enjoy thinking about the day for a minute. I uh, just get a few minutes of exposure. It helps uh, set circadian rhythm. It improves sleep. I'm going to do five minutes of light therapy. It's like this shit, that to me seems goofy. Mm -hmm. Like light, standing in front of a light? But I don't know, the man, he's, he's pretty serious Who with the science. We, somebody threw out there recently that they liked the light therapy. 
I know Is people somebody like on the it. crew? People like chiropractic. I feel like I've heard about that in New York, maybe, where I've it's like super like, depressing and you don't get enough sunlight. Is, is that like a thing? They're like facial yeah. gadgets. He lives in California. Use. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the mask that yeah. has like the light. There's, yeah. Wasn't there somebody telling us that they, they do that and they like it? Can, hey, can you look up, A.B., is that red light mask and all this light therapy actually a thing? I mean, he looks so good. I, It has to. Well, it's not just this. Right. <laughs> you know? But it's it, something magic is happening. Light and it keeps my complexion clear. Five minutes, and it's also a nice time to oh do my God. a little meditation. Oh my God, that seems really I'll focus on my <laughs> oh, yeah. I always wake up naturally, so it's <laughs> somewhere between. Meditation with neon lights oh, glass in my face. Christ, man! What happened? I thought you were just. In... <laughs> he, he's a lamp. He's a human lamp. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'll focus on my breathing. <laughs> I always wake up naturally, so it's somewhere between 4.30 and 6 a.m. Oh, yeah, I wake 4 30. up. I go to bed at the oh, same time every single night. We're trying to basically I think he goes measure. to bed at like some crazy ass like 8 p.m. type of shit. But like, does he have fun ever? If you were to ask me looking at this from the outside, I, it looks to me like his life is miserable, but he seems to be enjoying what he's doing. I don't think he has a normal type of personality. Mm -hmm. I think he, he, there's something going on that's yeah. unusual about this man. Uh, there has to be, you know? Sure. Every single organ in the entire body, and then we're trying to rejuvenate the age. And so every day when my team and I meet up, we're talking about, like, you know, the heart or the lungs or the pancreas, the liver. And so sometimes the analysis is we look at the data we've acquired, we do some uh, sort of assessment on the therapy, and then we implement it. But my job is to basically go through this full process from identifying the organ to do, looking at the analysis and then incorporating oh it. So sometimes yeah. that's taking a pill, sometimes it's putting a new device, sometimes it's you know a new exercise protocol, sometimes it's a new meditation practice. I now think of myself as a professional rejuvenation athlete. My life is trying to be the science. It's, it's like being the entire process of the discovery and analysis to the implementation. I do appreciate so I understand when that he's just doing it on himself. And yeah. Not, like risking somebody else. True. For his own benefit, you know. I agree. I mean, well, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be ethical to do it to somebody else uh, necessarily. Although I guess you could do it as part of a clinical trial, but I think it's, I agree. I mean, you know, he's living it. And he's taking it seriously. Yeah, he's he's Dr. Frankenstein in the sense that <laughs> it's his own creation. Yeah. And the old Brian that we saw is inside him screaming for help, for <laughs> release. <laughs> Let me out in the dark place or whatever. People look at this, they're like, that's nuts. It is nuts. But it's exactly what's required <clears throat> in the year 2023 if you want to do this entire process <clears throat> trying to look at every organ in the body. This is the device I use for my dry eye. I'll do this for 30 seconds in the morning when I wake up. And the first time you would do this, it's gonna be the most intense, it's like an orgasmic sneeze. Every two weeks, my team organizes all the pills. Well, he does, <laughs> that, again, yeah, he does that for dry eyes. <laughs> what's an orgasmic sneeze? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I know what he means I about a like satisfying sneeze, yeah. <laughs> but but like, what the fuck does that have to do with dry eyes, dude? You're rubbing your nostril, brother. My dry eye. I'll do if this. it makes you sneeze, does it make your eyes water? Maybe? Thirty seconds in the morning yeah. when I wake up, really and the first done. time you would there do might this, might be something to that, I guess. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even doubting. I'm just saying this guy's he's he's got he's on another level. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. He's rubbing right. his nose. He would know. Keep his eyes wet. You I'm, know when you you, get... you know who's doing that? <laughs> Who <laughs> else is doing that? <laughs> well, you get like punched in the nose. Your eyes get super watery. Yeah. So maybe. Mm -hmm. That's all. I wonder if he's there. Um, I, first of all, I wonder if he even watches television. If he does, I Hell wonder no. if he watched that documentary that we just watched about the cold uh, Love Has Won. <laughs> and oh, wow. the, the Love Has Won cult and the leader, the mother god, she was drinking colloidal silver. Oh, so I'm curious, oh, what's his right. take about colloidal silver? That was a long way to say that. that <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the research on colloidal silver there, uh, A.B.? <laughs> By the way, red light therapy shows premise in various areas, but scientific evidence is not conclusive for all of its purported benefits. Mm. More research is needed to fully understand its effectiveness and the best way to use it. Dish, addition, <laughs> thanks, <Zach. laughs> Additionally, results may uh, vary from person to person. Benefits include skin health, pain relief, inflammation, pain and inflammation relief, Muscle recovery, hair growth, mood, and sleep. I mean, what the fuck doesn't it do? 
I get <laughs> I get skeptical when it's like, you know, there's too much good things going on. Sneezing yeah. and orgasms both produce endorphins, which make your body feel good. Oh, okay. So there's an orgasmic sneeze. There you go. There's like, yeah, some kind of myth about it creating a mini orgasm, but it's not true. It's not even close to the number. Nobody of, believes that. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's enough for there to like be a, a few articles about it. But I've heard that before. Is it just but, like yeah, an analogy? I, yeah, I yeah. think so. Maybe when I was a kid. I, I mean, you just you don't sneeze and cream your pants. <laughs> At least I haven't. Yeah. Um, about the red light thing, we should ask him what he thinks about getting a red light on your taint, like Tucker Carlson was pitching last year. I Do you mean, remember that? If it's good for the face, it's good for the taint. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good question as well. You know, a lot of people surprisingly <coughs> drink that colloidal silver thing. So what is colloidal just, silver? Uh, somebody at Teddy Fresh yesterday had a drink with colloidal silver. Wait, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, you should what like a fancy drink. Do that. Doesn't that turn people blue? Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> no, what I'm pretty sure that's, that's like a total. This woman, shit, by the way, that's she, sick, dude. Yeah, she's yeah. slowly dying throughout the documentary, mostly from liver failure, but she, she turns, turns blue. blue. Like her, she becomes like dark blue. Yeah. Like yep. a smurf. And bro. she drinks it like medicine every day, the colloidal silver, because they also sell it. So she kind of like. What? Wait. We should we should talk about it offline. We, who that is? We might need to do an intervention. <laughs> I. I'm pretty sure that that is like <laughs> totally bogus and actually like kind of dangerous to do. <laughs> well, is it dangerous? As soon as I saw it, I was like, "Don't drink that. You're gonna turn." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It says colloidal no. silver. It sounds like a hemeopathy thing. Colloidal silver has been used for infections, hay fever, skin conditions, many others, but there's no good scientific evidence to support any of its uses. Uh, col colloidal silver consists of tiny silver particles and liquid. It is sometimes promoted on the internet as a dietary supplement. Is it dangerous? Uh, well, I'm seeing uh, on a government website, the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration has warned that colloidal silver isn't safe or effective for treating any disease or condition. I wouldn't think so. I mean, it's just ground up silver. What's that going to do for me? It's not even like an essential mineral. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm like, seeing the chat is pretty much all in agreement that it's not, so there, not so a good there's idea. There's someone drinking a fancy drink with yeah. silver sand in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Oh, it boy. looked all like you know, fancy and expensive. Okay. It caused kidney damage and seizures. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no. Those are the risks? Yeah. That doesn't sound too bad. Well, also it could interact <laughs> with other medications. <laughs> and also uh -oh. it turns you blue! Like, yes. what, like da -de -da -da. Why, why do people want to do that? Do you want to share a picture? I want to look up colloidal, colloidal silver blue skin. Let's just see what we find here. Oh, uh, just so you know, Brian has entered the waiting room. No Ooh. shot. Is this guy real? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, that's very famous. Uh, it's <laughs> what the hell? Silver are you drinking there, Brocco? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Brother, you're blue. <laughs> are you kidding me? Brother. Wow. You're blue, boy. <laughs> what happened? What'd you do to your damn skin, boy? You walk around all blue. Why I ain't never you... seen myself of no blue man before. Why are you she, still drinking it? Then? I don't like that. It's kind of a vibe. It's a good vibe, right? <laughs> no, yeah. it's not. It's, it's, it's so good. different. Terrible vibes. Um, Bro, look at that. He's happy about it, too. He likes it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Brian is here. Brian is here. Um, there's one minute left. I, I'll just finish this, Brian, if you're watching, just to uh, set you up properly here. Mm hmm. It's going to be the most intense, like an orgasmic sneeze. <laughs> Every two weeks, my team organizes all the pills. In between that time duration, we change certain things. And when we change it, it's a manual change. And these manual pills become my responsibility. I don't know how many pills in here. I think last time we reported, it was something like over 50, maybe 60. I'll use red light therapy. I started losing More? my hair in my oh, early 30s. Dude. It's been a difficult thing. I've had to work really hard to try to keep a head of hair. And this is uh, a useful thing. It's one of uh, six different things I do. This is what I'm going to eat after we work out. I rotate every month. One month puree, one month. Bro, what's on your head? <laughs> it's the red light, dude. I know, but like you're just walking around Was he saying the red that? light helps with his hair loss? That's what mm -hmm. he says. He's working on it. Shit, hmm. I gotta get on that. Yeah, same. Bro, well, just get plugs. <laughs> I mean, I would tell him just get plugs. I mean... You're the well, man. I wonder because he said he started losing his hair at a very young age. I wonder if he thirty. You think he already that. did? Oh, that could be. Well, I don't know, and he might not even be in denying that. He he might fess up <sighs> to that. Hmm. 
whole pieces. Yeah, overall, it's, it's a lot of vegetables every month. It's over 50 pounds, I think. What is that what? slop? It's a slop bucket. Yeah, what was in that? I don't look It was appetizing. like gray goo. Yeah. So anyway, there's just a little overview about what he's up to, and uh, let's get him on the phone, man. Okay, stand by. I'll uh, set him up here. But there's also there's a lot of other stuff I want to show you guys, and I'll show those, I guess, uh, with him to comment on them. Mm -hmm. But. All right, I am uh, bringing him into the room right now. Just one moment. <laughs> uh, Brian, are you there? Hey, what's up? Hello. Here he is, tech, tech trillionaire Brian Johnson. <laughs> Brian, are you aware that, do you know who Liver King is? I think he's the Brian Johnson in a parallel universe. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and so, if I'm trying, would you would you get in maybe like a same? I want to get you guys in a conversation. The War of the Brian's, Brian uh, Johnsons. <laughs> would you have a conversation with Liver? Do we communicate with grunts or language? Well, you do you, and he'll do him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure we can. Yeah. Yes. Happy to. It is pretty interesting, though, how. <laughs> you guys are like so fucking different like I literally yin yangs anyway how are you thanks for calling in thanks for having me <laughs> so you uh let's see here are you currently treating anything in your body right now like do you have your feet in a red light or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> uh let me think about it <laughs> nothing currently right now that's surprising. Okay. <laughs> you're 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 missing out on prime uh, you're right. opportunity yeah. here. <laughs> so, tell me about um, when you got started on this journey of uh, Project Blueprint to slow or stop aging. You know, I love this this thought experiment. I read a lot of biographies, and I love reading about the past and seeing people in their time and place who did epic things. And I know most of us are concerned about what goes on here and now, but the 25th century is going to have a perspective of us right now. And 99.9% .9 of what we do is going to be wiped away to history. And I thought, what would be the coolest thing to do from the perspective of the 25th century? Like, what is a thing that we figure out in the early 21st century? And that's what Bloomberg is, is like, basically, I observed that we've achieved a level of intelligence uh, with AI in specific, specifically that we don't know any longer how long and how well we can live. The death used to be inevitable, maybe it's not anymore. And so that's what this is about. It's about a, a zeitgeist shift that the 25th century would say, oh yeah, that's obvious. But we look at it and we think, that's oh, nuts. That doesn't make any sense at all. So are you, is there a chance that you don't die? Yeah, if you, to put this into perspective, imagine we're hanging out a million years ago with Homo erectus and they have an ax in their hand. And we're like, hey, Homo erectus, what's up? How's it going? They hadn't innovated the ax for a million years. And you're like, hey, can you riff for us? Tell us what the future of the species is like. You know, we would just view Homo erectus from a form of entertainment. Like we wouldn't think that they'd be spitting lyrics about quantum mechanics or about space time or about the internet or being able to call someone anywhere in the world at any moment. Uh, and the same thing, I wonder if we are basically the equivalent of Homo erectus right now, if that whatever we say about the future has no bearing whatsoever, because we're going to move at the speed of a hundred year, a million years of evolutionary advance in a very short period of time. And when you look at how fast artificial intelligence is moving. So yes, like basically I think uh, we can say nothing about the future in this moment. We are basically Homo erectus. Brian, I feel that you're dodging the question. Will you die? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> By right. a percentage, what chance are we looking at here of Brian dying one day? The fact that you're even thinking about this is interesting. <laughs> True, yeah. Yeah. You, so you're saying there's a chance you just keep going. You keep living on. Fuck yeah. Brian Johnson forever. Yeah. Uh, we have all of the technical tools to solve aging, and we just need a bit more time to solve the problem. It's, it does Solving aging does not break the laws of physics. Well, there are some animals that don't age. That could, I think, theoretically live forever, right? There's some ocean creatures... Uh, jellyfish, I think. I forget which ones, but there are some quote unquote immortal animals in yep. nature. Is exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. That's right. We have biology has proven that it is possible to live a very long time. What are the animals that are immortal? Do you do you recall? I'm curious. Yes. I think it was a uh, hydra, some... <laughs> Greenland yeah. shark, red sea urchin, clams. A shark. Uh, Greenland shark. Greenland shark lives forever. Lobsters. Lobsters? Really? Holy shit. 
the ocean. What's going on in the ocean, Brian? They've there's something in the water, literally. I'm missing out. I should be. I should set up shop down you, there. You, sh yeah. you should be drinking uh, ocean water. <laughs> I should try to grow some gills and. <laughs> yeah. So, um, are you afraid of dying? Yeah, Brian. You know, uh, you're running from it. Yeah. You know what? You're also I... doing science, but personally, you you're also invested in this. Do yeah, you think I... about dying? I wonder if it would make people feel better if I was scared of dying. I, I wonder, is that question really about me or is it about the person asking the question? Wow. No, it's Ooh. about you. I mean, hey, bro, just for the record, you're the one that did it. Hold on. You're the guy that dedicates his whole life to not dying and literally just refused to answer the question, will you die? So I really don't think that it's a uh, self-accusing uh, question. I do wonder, though, of how much people do say about me is self-commentary or really is about me. Like what? Mm. I mean, take your thing. There's so many things to choose from. So there, it's true that you do get a lot of flack online. Um, I think mostly because it's just, it's just odd, frankly, uh, on the surface level. It's just a little bit like, wow, this is, this is pretty weird and wild. But you know, like the question is, is it odd according to 2023 standards or is it odd to 2030 standards or to 2040 the thing that's odd is like nobody wants to be left behind in the future and so the question is is this really the future because if you're identifying that okay i'm not doing something that is considered quote unquote normal in 2023 but is this going to be normal in 2030 if it is you want in it's the future we, we don't, none of us want to be in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is the legitimate question here is, is people use the word weird as some shortcut to try to exclude somebody from our social tribe. Like, hey, they don't belong with us because we here are normal people, humans. That person's weird. Therefore, they don't belong as part of us. But what's the origin and what's the justification for making that observation? So you, refu you are refuting the weird claims. It's a lazy form of assessment. You know, it's just like you look through history, like what isn't it's just, weird? It's a history? snap judgment, though. You know what I mean? The, the, but but here I'll ask you this. I mean, if we're talking about uh, making these kinds of increased lifespans accessible, how are people who don't have two million dollars per year to spend on medical uh, going to benefit from your research? Yeah, everything I've done is freely shared with the entire world. All my data, all my protocols, all my recipes, every pill I take, everything is shared for free with everyone. And you can, someone can do a blueprint in the US for between $1,000 and $1,500 per month, which includes groceries. So it's absolutely affordable for most people. People can go to bed on time and it doesn't cost them anything. And so these things, people hear the $2 million uh, tag and they think, oh no, that's totally inaccessible and I can't do anything. The majority of the power laws for longevity are in the most basic things. It's in exercise, sleep, and diet, the basics we all know. So, no, it's absolutely not true that this is outside the reach of almost anyone. And even if you don't have money to buy, you know, a high-quality food, you can still go to bed on time and exercise. Mm -hmm. Where did that $2 million number come from? It's the money I've spent. We went through a process and we said, um, okay, so let me jump back. I basically said in looking at the explorers of times past and when they said hey i'm going to try to circumnavigate the globe or i'm going to try to fly a plane across the atlantic or i'm going to try to climb everest or like whatever a person tried to say they would do for adventure i said in 2023 what is the most epic adventure any human could go after and it was death and so we said okay if we're going to do this then we want to go about it in a systematic way so i built a team of 30 doctors and we combed through all the scientific literature every study ever done on, on lifespan and health span and then we graded each of them according to these biostatistical criteria. And we said, which ones have the best evidence? And then we've just marched through and said, okay, we're going to knock out every power law in this game. And then we've I've become the most measured person in human history. Mm -hmm. And so I say tongue in cheek, Blueprint is the best health protocol built in human history. Prove me wrong with your data. There's no one more quantified ever. Uh, there's no more evidence. You know, there's no one who's compiled more evidence behind it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that this is useful for people because, you know, I certainly could have hid this behind some paywall or I could have been charging for it, but I've made it all for free. Mm -hmm. So everyone can do it. Yeah, I do. Actually, I do appreciate that. I think it's I think ultimately your your uh, pursuit is a is a uh, a noble one, I think. At least I think I think, you know, 
as it's never happened before, I do think it can have some really far reaching benefits for people. What kind of stuff would you say has surprised you the most that you've learned throughout this journey? It works. Mm. That surprised you the most. Because I used, I was interested in health and wellness and I would find a doctor and you know they'd have their own thing of like, here's my understanding of reality and do these things. And I was always chasing and win some things, lose some things, but I've never had whole body rejuvenation that science can, uh, can, ju- can basically agree with. Like mm-hmm. the, all my data is public and you just can't refute the data. Whether you disagree with like this, this test or that test, there's so many at this point now, you know, it just works. And that's, I didn't think that you could put together a program and systematically achieve whole body wellness and spiritual, physical, mental, all the above. So is there any downsides in your life to living this super ultra regimented lifestyle? What's the drawbacks for you? Honestly, none. I know that that's one of the first things that people assume is like, they, there's like 10 things like he must be miserable because he's in a cage of his own making. He must be antisocial. He must hate his food. He must desperately want pizza and donuts. He must definitely want to get drunk. And so there's all these assumptions. None are true. I've never been happier in my entire life. Like, I mean, I was in, I was in a pretty bad state. I was chronically depressed for 10 years. Mm. Like I, I desperately wanted to take my own life and Mm. I would have had it not been for my three kids. Mm. So like, I, you know, it's just like, God is depression. It doesn't suck. Like it's the worst. Like every 10 seconds, your brain's like, you should commit suicide. Thanks. You know, it's just like this omnipresent thing. And so, yeah, I just, I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I feel really well. Um, I just have this deep appreciation for life. And so I don't miss anything that I did before. I used to, every night at 7 p.m., uh, this version of me, Evening Brian, would be at the end of the day, he would have all the stress from running the startup. I would have just put together, put, uh, put the kids to bed, bathed them, read them stories, got them in bed, and then have a fight with the partner and then like the world just fills on fire. And the only thing that made sense to me was eat the brownies in the kitchen, in the kitchen, you know, like just go eat to get some kind of soothe your pain. Yeah. And I put on 50 pounds. I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now. I couldn't sleep. Um, I had my top button of my pants wouldn't button up because I was so overweight. It just was like miserable. So I'm just so happy I'm out of that cycle. It was really bad. Yeah. I, are, I th- are you able to still maintain a healthy family life with this? lifestyle it's so counterintuitively it's better than it ever has been mm. every everything in my life is better there's not a single thing that i would consider to be a sacrifice and so do you date how what is that like do you take a date out and then it's like you don't need it you don't i'm assuming you're single just because you said you were i i think you mentioned that you were separated from your partner but uh what's dating brian johnson like yeah <laughs> uh, and are you single i am single yeah there it is it's, people uh, uh yeah <laughs> so it's like um yeah it's a complicated question because the most people have expectations about <laughs> what is appropriate for how somebody's in a relationship in the year 20, 2023 and i basically break all norms that are in the zeitgeist. And so one has to be over that. And then two, I'm pretty focused on this endeavor and I don't uh, prioritize relationships as much as people would expect. So yeah, statistically, the person that's going to be compatible with me is just going to be, it's, it's going to be hard to find them. They're going to know they're going to, yeah. Okay. That's good. You, it's you're almost like a religion that they have to join. <laughs> I mean, so I, when I go on dates, I, I tell them the 10 reasons why they're going to hate me and, uh, and at what periods of time it's going to commence. <clears throat> um, what's your, suggest. what's your idea of a perfect date? I'm just curious. Like, what do you guys do? Cause you don't, you don't eat bread probably and butter. That's what I like. You said dinner, you could bread and butter, have a glass <laughs> of wine. You don't do any of that stuff. Uh, I'll go on a hike. Recently I went to a trampoline park. <laughs> <laughs> trampoline park that's kind yeah. of fun date first date yeah i was i was working on trying to do a flip and yeah. i mentioned that a little bit uh, no i suck at it them because <laughs> i want to get better and 
And so they were like, let's do it. I'm like, okay. I, I, I felt a little odd, a little bashful saying we should go to a trampoline park on the first date, but yeah, she was down with it. There you go. That's nice. Do you watch television? Sometimes. Okay. Not a lot. What do you watch? Recently, uh, South Park is my go-to most oh, of the time. Mm, interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Has here, there been an episode about you? By the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually I, shit. That actually might happen. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And would you ever eat raw liver? <laughs> Here's you in alternate universe. This. Oh, he can't see it. Oh, okay. Never mind then. So I I I wanted to review some more videos of your routine, and then maybe you can comment on them afterwards if that's okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, there. He can see it now, and eh, whatever. So, <laughs> I wanted to watch your one about your your boner routine, which was pretty yeah. interesting and a little unexpected. But yeah. here's the video. The I need my nighttime erection. Like How long are you hours. erect each night? And apparently, this is an important question for male he <laughs> men's health, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go get those boners on, people. Anyway, here is the uh, video. <clears throat> 12 minutes per night in erections, which is a biological age of about 49. So three years older than my chronological age. I need to see if I can do some therapies to reduce the biological age. If I'm going to achieve age 18 of nighttime erections, I need to have three hours and 30 minutes. So I need to increase my- Wait, You're trying to get 18 year old erection? <laughs> you're, you're, you're flying for the sun, brother. <laughs> All you right. know when, yeah, go ahead. Time erections by roughly an hour and 20 minutes on that marker. Blood flow, min max, uh, urination speed, and then penis plaque will also have these baseline measurements to know what therapies we need to do to rejuvenate the penis. I did my nighttime erections and I averaged two hours and 12 minutes per night in erections, which is a biological a age of about 49. So three years older than my chronological age. So wait, there was more. There was ones where you were talking about, uh, Right, oh, here, here it is. Here's more where you were talking about and doing injections in your dick and stuff. And I was like, yeah. yo, that's pretty crazy. And so you've been, um, but yeah, I guess tell me about your nighttime, uh, erection routine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should to say that. Yeah. Um, I had two scientists approach me at a longevity conference and they said, we confess we hated you. We thought, <laughs> That you brought embarrassment to the community and you were bringing shame to our work. Jeez, they said, it's it, harsh. They, but they said, we now confess we love you because we never thought that talking about nighttime erections and rejuvenating Johnson's Johnson hmm. would be the language that would translate for people understanding what longevity is. Huh. So and th this is the bridge. People are on board with penis <laughs> rejuvi rejuvenation. Uh -huh. that, that was a moment for me because they were like, you know, we thought this was going to be like a scientific publication headline that we had done this protein doing this thing. And they're like, actually, no, people just care about their penises being rejuvenated. And working. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That's, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what what else is it really about? Why are we trying that, to live forever, Brian? If not, you know, to have, you know. Honestly, that's the bullseye. You nailed it. I mean, honestly, like legit, what do what else do we care about? I mean, like we have we're pretty basic creatures. And, you know, when your health is not well, when you're not sleeping well, nighttime erections are the first thing to go away. And mm. so if you have a zero score, it's a really good invitation to reconsider your life choices. So the, the, the nighttime erection isn't the sim it's a measurement more of your body's health. It's not, it's like the dipstick coming out, you know what I mean? Or like the air pressure tire, you know, when you gauge, mm. it's just, it's a measurement. It's not yeah. the erection itself that's causing uh, any difference. Exactly. No, it just tells you it's a measurement of your sexual, physiological, cardiovascular health. <laughs> mm. And so tell me about the, tell me about the routine. Uh, so for, we did this baseline uh, measurement. It's just a small little cube that you put on the shaft and you, once you put it on, you can barely fill it. It uh, You forget about it. And can then at night... Up? I'm curious what it looks like. Can you pull it up? A cube? Yeah. It's a cube about um, three quarters of an inch cubed. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yep. And then it has a, a little string around it so that as 
the penis becomes erect at night and enlarges, then it measures the enlargement. And so it, it measures how long the penis is erect and what quality the erection level was. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, my last measurement, I had five total erections, uh, duration of like two hours and 47 minutes. And each one was around you know 40 something odd minutes. All right, something like that. And then I got a 92% erection quality score as an average among the erections. And I, I know that, for example, when I sleep poorly because I've traveled or something, that nighttime erections plummet to sometimes like 30, 40 minutes. And so it has a huge impact when you deviate, when you get poor health. But then with some things we've done to try to improve it, we've used electromagnetic therapy. So it's like Can a- Can you pull that? Sorry, I just, I was pulling up a clip of the device. I just wanted to see what it and looks so you like. Put, there you go. I put yeah, that's right, Oh, there so- there Mine's a little bit bigger. I need to, have you got a, <laughs> so you <laughs> tighten it? Or? Yeah. So you yeah. have and that you on, put it on the, on the base? Yeah. Okay. Just, just at night. Just and at I night. do it. Yeah, and I'll do it like three or four nights in a row mm. when I'm doing the measurement. And then I won't do it for a month or two. So spacing between the therapies. And then I also did. The boner box. Yeah, mm. that's a good name. Yeah. And then does this stuff apply to women? <laughs> It does. So it's the literature suggests that women also have nightmare erections. It's just very hard to measure. It's mm-hmm. it's a very yeah, it's a difficult one to get at. So there's not as much uh, evidence around nighttime erections for women, mm-hmm. although it's it's theorized that it's happening uh, the same as men. Mm-hmm. You know, that interestingly, because I feel when I wait, have a nighttime erection, I feel like a lot of times I wake up and it's like it's a response to having to pee. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing or is that just me? I don't know. I'm not sure. They, they may coincide. Yeah, I mean, if you remember, like when you were a kid, when you were 13, 14, like I was erect all the time. You know, like you, you're walking in between class and like you just become erect. And it's yeah. like, God damn it, my pants are bulging. I have to put my book over my pants because mm-hmm. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, it's horrific. But it, it just naturally happens. And as time, it goes down. So yeah, so we also, I also did this electromagnetic uh, or this focus shockwave therapy. So it's um, a little device it's used for whole body. So it fires these acoustical waves into the body. It's used for like tendons, ligaments, all the joints in the body. It's also used for erectile dysfunction. So while I don't have erectile dysfunction, my uh, sexual performance scores are all perfect. Uh, we theorized if it's helpful for ED in some people, let's try it for the therapy enhancement. So we gave it a go and uh, we did see an improvement in nighttime erections. I'm not yet at an 18 year old level. We're not sure if we can identify any therapy that can get us there. We're making slow progress, but uh, it's been a hard one. Yeah. So you say you have a perfect score on sexual wellness. Is that something you bring up on the first date or no? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Listen, I, I, I want to tell you up front, I've got the erection of an 18-year-old. No, thank you. Anyway, uh, let's keep watching. Or no, we already saw it. So what, what is it that you're doing, though? Because I saw you talking about putting injections in your penis, and that's, that doesn't seem like something that many people would be willing to do. Yeah, we were looking at... <laughs> so we were trying to create the most quantified penis ever. And so we said, we looked at all the evidence, and we said, what is every single test we can do to quantify the function of my penis? And so we said we can do nighttime erections, we can look at penile blood flow. So when you get erect, you've got a certain flow rate of blood in your penis. And so the injection was looking, using ultrasound with an erect penis to look at blood flow. And you can age score that. As you age, you have less blood flow in the penis. So by having that measurement protocol, you're, you're seeing if there's improvements. And it's also a marker when you're looking at focus shockwave therapy to see if that's improving. Because focus shockwave therapy is supposed to improve those kinds of characteristics. And then I was doing the maximum uh, urine flow, max peen, and uh, we did ultrasound of the prostate, of uh, the bladder. Uh, oh, we're, we just got a new technology that's coming in this week uh, looking at um, the tip of the shaft sensitivity. So we can measure that hold with on, high precision. Hold the phone. How do you measure that? Yeah, we just, we just found this guy. He What'd has you buy, this a device. flashlight? <laughs> uh, it, it's a... It's a device, we, we just talked about it this week. Um, it's used to measure sensitivity around the body. Uh, a penis is the one application. So we're going to use that on the, the tip to, to quantify sensitivity, which is another. Like for example, um, we measured my nerve sensitivity in my hills. 
and uh, I've got three and a half meters of sensitivity. You bring two points and you start very narrow and you get larger and larger. And then as you age, you get less sensitive. So like an 80 or 90 year old, like they'd have sensitivity, you know, like an inch or two or three, I forget what the number is. Mm. But young, young people have a sensitivity because your nerves just decay. Mm. And so my nerve sensitivity had actually improved since starting Blueprint. And I think my age marker was like 22 or something like that. So yeah, we're looking at basically degradation of the of nerves throughout the body from sexual function to uh, feet. And um, what is the significance of pea strength? I'll admit my pea strength is not what it used to be. And I, I'll tell you, we have young boys and seeing them pee has reminded me yeah. of, the, of what we used to have. Because y'all remember like being in elementary school, you would stand like 20 feet back from the fucking urinal <laughs> and slam it in there Fire every up. time. Uh, and I just, I don't have that, that strength like I did, Brian. Exactly. So what do so we, we, yeah. Yeah. So this is the cool thing. I mean, I mean but why is that important? Uh, because the body degrades across all systems over time. Mm. And we're trying to demonstrate that you can isolate these systems with robust measurement. You can look at scientific evidence and then reverse it. I mean, let's just be honest. Like we want to, we want to all be kids sitting back five feet, having peeing contests. That's fun. And the older you get, you can't do it anymore. And it kind of sucks. Right. And so I'm really, I, I realize that, uh, what I do appears to be ridiculous. Like I'm fully self-aware of the entire situation. Also, like we, you know, it sucks to get old and it sucks when these things degrade. And so we're really trying to, to demonstrate that um, you can do something about age to slow it down and even, re even reverse it. Mm -hmm. um, here is another one that I wanted to ask you about. This, is another, this has been going around the whole blood, the blood of your son. You guys have like a blood w waterfall going on where... <sighs> Your son is putting his blood in you, and you're putting your blood in your dad, and everybody's getting younger somehow. Your son's the only one, frankly, who needs blood. He, we need to get him some baby blood or something. <laughs> did you see the results uh, that my dad had? I, 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 I did. I saw, you had mentioned that it had a significant uh, positive impact on your dad, right? Yeah, lowered his speed of aging by 25 years. <laughs> he went from aging at this pace of a 71-year-old to the age of a, to the speed of a 46-year-old. And has that measurement continued to stay around? Yeah, we he we did three measurements before the therapy. This is using DNA methylation patterns, and we did three measurements after the therapy. The last one six months post therapy, and it's still the effect still persisted. And wow. If, yeah. Just from the blood? Do you think there's anything else going on? Or just because you got that blood? And by the way, how much can, can I buy some of that? Yeah. <laughs> there, there's two things. One is he had 600 milliliters of his plasma removed and then one okay. liter of my plasma infused. So it's not clear was the effect due to him removing his stuff or infusing my stuff or both uh, to some combo. Well, people lose and lots of blood all the time. It doesn't de-edge them. Do you need to do that regularly? Give him blood? You do. Oh, uh, so we, we've, we've okay. just done it once. Yeah, that's the thing is the <coughs> we we just did it one time and we wanted to see if it would work. But you know, like my dad's 70 years old. He he works in law and he was telling me that he did a brief and then he left his desk, went back to his desk and it was a jumbled mess. And he, he became so shocked because he was unaware that his mind was a jumbled mess. He it was basically his his um, loss of cognitive capacity was invisible to him, mm -hmm. and he became terrified. He called me and he's like, "Hey, like I need to tell you something. This is very alarming." And I said, "Okay, Dad, we're actually we're talking about these plasma things this week as a team. I just I've been doing a few of these. I'd be happy to do this with you." And so like it was such a special moment for like my dad is like trying to hang on to his cognitive existence. And when you, if you ask him about how he's felt post the infusion, uh, he'll report it's changed his life. Like he just feels really? different. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how can we, how could you possibly uh, extend that um, to a wider populace? Because you just have that, you've got that good blood, and um, I can't imagine that you you'd be happy to start selling that out. Yeah, the cool thing is there's several companies working on the technology that would make this possible without other humans needing to do it. Mm. So they they actually build the therapy in the lab 
And that way everyone can get access to it and you wouldn't need to do this person to person. So they, so people are, they, they can make blood essentially with the composition of your blood. Basically. Yeah. Cause you're, just, you're pull, you're grabbing the blood, you separate plasma from blood and you're just working with the plasma. Basically the good things in the plasma that potentially cause the effect and, or, uh, removing the stuff in the plasma that causes the effect. Both are options. And so the, this is what I'm saying, why it's such an exciting time to live, is these things are in process. They're uh, very close. And we are going to be able to dramatically slow our aging and reverse it uh, in ways that probably uh, bend our imagination right now. And it's so close. That is very interesting, yeah. Here's the video of uh, you and your son. How old is your son? He's 18 now. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Very young man. And has his blood uh, uh, benefited you? We couldn't identify uh, a difference in my blood or in my markers. Uh -huh. So it, mm -hmm. if it did have a positive effect, we haven't been able to identify it yet. Uh, it's possible, though, that you know, my markers are so close to my son's but right I now. That maybe I, just not, maybe not enough of a difference. Whereas like, if you compare my dad's markers to mine, there's such a big difference right. that it's sensible that there was a, a change. So if your son gave your dad blood, would it have put, uh, theoretically a stronger effect? I mean, that's the thing. My son's blood and mine are, is about the same. <laughs> yeah. Like if you look at various markers, so I don't know, maybe. But it seems I mean, like how I, the blood transfusion thing seems like I'm surprised that this hasn't been observed before because people are donating and receiving mm -hmm, blood all the right. time for, for, for centuries. Right. Yeah, it's pretty recent literature. I mean, it was shown in animals first with the, that famous experiment, but then recently in humans. There's some interesting clinical trials going on around Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But yeah, it's definitely, oh, well, I, I, go ahead. They're, they're experimenting with treating Alzheimer's and Parkinson's with blood transfusions. Exactly. Yeah, wow. that's, why, that's why I brought my dad in because there's some encouraging evidence, early evidence on it. It's not conclusive yet, it's still an emergent space. So uh, it's really experimental therapy. But it, it's, you know, like we saw it in my dad and my dad has experienced the benefits. It's so That's it's, interesting. It's, yeah, that would be cool. amazing if that became like a whole new medical vertical of just like blood transfusing. Sounds yeah. something so doable. Yeah, totally. There it is. Uh, here, let me, let me uh, get a load of this here. Physical symptoms, everything. It's your dad. And his reconciliation. And he had to pull himself apart. And so as he's gone through that process, then he's been able to look at me and say, ah, I get it. You know, it was not an act of cruelty, a misjudgment, you know, lack of character. And, uh, and so that has resulted in, in what I see is this kind of unification where we get each other, you know. Dad's getting emotional. Here the three of you guys are. Is this your only son? Yes. I, I have two other children. I have two sons, uh, yeah. two boys and a girl. Was this the only guy who was willing to get involved in this, the shenanigans? <laughs> uh, he, was, he, was a, he was the willing participant, yes. That's good. Um, here is some photos we grabbed. Don't die. What, what, do, we, what do we do about yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so if you take stock of this moment where artificial intelligence is improving at a speed that we can't understand. It's so fast that we can't understand it. And we've got potential climate collapse uh, of some sort, and we humans are dangerously at each other's throats. What as a species do we do? How do we solve problems before they ruin existence? And I thought about this question for years. And when you look out in the world and say, okay, what ideologies in the world are actually helpful? Can we ask religions what they think? Are they going to offer anything helpful? No. <laughs> Can we turn to capitalism and have that solve our problems? Not really. <clears throat> same with socialism. Same with, so like, you look out in the world and say, like, who, who has a framework to help us think how to practically solve day-to-day -day problems on how we not destroy ourselves? And don't die is the philosophy I came up with. Zero, it's just called zeroism. <laughs> of like a practical and holistic perspective on how do we as a species survive ourselves and build an amazing future. Well, one of my questions for you is this, are you sure that living longer is going to be better for 
society. A lot of times, especially as you mentioned, society, we are progressing so quickly that frankly, um, change only happens our, in our society when the older generation starts dying mm -hmm. and um, the, the new ideas are allowed to become mainstream. Um, and so I wonder if this is a good thing, people living to 200 years old or so, or whatever it is you, you imagine that we could be living to. Yeah, here's a different way of thinking about it is don't die is the most played game out of anything in existence by everyone in the world every second of the day. There's no game more people play. So like in this moment, the three of us are playing don't die. We breathe every few seconds to make sure we have enough oxygen. If anything were to uh, threaten our lives, we would immediately stop this conversation and protect our lives. We look both ways before we cross the street. We throw out multi foods. We are omnipresent concerned about not dying. And we've just simply, as a society, we've gotten a lot better at not dying. Our, you know, our life expectancies are doubled than what they used to be. The future is just simply getting really, really, really good at not dying. And that's what I've done in, in Blueprint is I basically, as being the most measured person in, in history, we have figured out all the way, not figured out, we have identified as many ways as we can, all the ways I die <laughs> on a minute to minute basis. And we've then tried to reduce those. And so that's what it's about is playing the same game we're all playing right now. And like right, right now, like none of, we don't want to die. Like no one wants to die. I mean, that's not true. Most people don't want to die. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, so what is the life expectancy that you think is realistic uh, with these methods you're working on now? Short of immortality, of course. Yeah. Which you seem to be potentially convinced of. This is the thing. Uh, I am the equivalent of Homo erectus. I have, ab I, I am a caveman. I have nothing intelligent to say about the future. That's the thing is if you really understand where artificial intelligence is at, it invokes a humility that we are primitive. We have no idea what's going, what's coming. And that's why I, the don't die is the only, the only thing I know in existence is don't die. And the, the philosophy is applicable to you know, like the health of our planet matters. Like we need a stable biosphere to support life on this planet. And right now we're not doing a great job. And blueprint is equally as applicable to the planet. Just replace my body with the earth. And the same process applies. You measure earth with millions of measurements. You look at the scientific evidence and say, what is a healthy ocean look like? What are, what's healthy soil? What's a healthy biosphere? What's healthy air? You implement the protocols and then you do it again and again. But we treat planet Earth just like we treat our bodies. We have the exact same relationship with both entities. And people don't realize that, 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 that this is what I'm trying to do is this is about individual health. Yes, but it's about don't die individually. Don't kill each other. Don't kill the planet and align AI with don't die. It is the only philosophy that is relevant in this moment in time. Mm hmm. So say some tech came around that was like revolutionary to the point of saying, basically, we found a way for cells to self uh, duplicate uh, perfectly. And the aging process is just it stopped. We don't age anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's something ethical and worth pursuing um, uh, that kind of technology? Oftentimes, the problems we think about in society don't end up being the problems that actually we care about. So an example of this is in when in early 1900s New York, horse manure was the biggest problem there uh, because horse was the primary mode of transportation. Manure was everywhere. It was in the Hudson River. It caused disease. Uh, they couldn't eliminate it fast enough. And so the world was coming to an end and they couldn't solve the problem. And then Henry Ford made the Model T and the car made horses uh, irrelevant. So the, the manure problem went away. So what they thought was an existential problem wasn't in fact the existential problem. Now the car created other problems that were the real problems. And right now I, I'm not sure if we know what the real problems are. I hear your question. You know, we can apply, we can take 2023 ethics and morals and apply it to a certain question. But to me, it's just like looking backwards. We're not really <laughs> mapping. Is it possible though, uh, that you're avoiding somehow uh, convinced, it seems like you've justified in your mind avoiding thinking about the, the difficult um, side, the, the, the difficult effect to, to grapple with of what these long slash immortal lives uh, mean for humanity and the world. 
Because I do think, you know, it's it, we can say like, yeah, the future is unknown and we're insignificant. But at the same time, it is, I think, important and very possible to, you know, uh, uh, to muse on it, to think about on it, to think about the importance of it. I mean, you could say the same about AI. People, we don't know where AI is going, but we sure, is, we sure do need to be having conversations about the future and what it might look like and how to, you know, prevent yeah. or incur certain outcomes. Yeah. Um, you know, 99% of what we say on a daily basis, we are regurgitating opinions, perspectives, and viewpoints of the current zeitgeist. To say something truly novel takes tremendous effort. And so I could whip up words and speculate <clears throat> about this or that. It's meaningless. My refusal to answer the question is actually more viable because what I'm trying to do is I'm acknowledging I am an absolute primitive creature relative to the intelligence on the horizon. And the future of intelligence is not knowing. We humans have answers for everything. We want to run our mouths at every moment for every little thing. And for us to admit that we don't know, it's the most uncomfortable thing in the entire world, but that's the future of our existence is that we don't know. And so if you look back at it like, two, like 20, 30, 20, 30 years ago, even like 500 years ago, you could look at the past and look at the future and say, you know what? I have a pretty good idea what's going to happen. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to learn this thing. I'm going to have a career in this thing. I'm going to have a few kids. And, uh, right now, you cannot model out 12 months from now. Never in the history of humanity has the future been a wall of fog. And that is the case right now. We do not know. And so I'd rather lean into the do not know than run my mouth and say something that parrots existing zeitgeist because it's just the past. Like these are ideas of dead people. I'd rather look forward and see if I can figure out something novel and interesting. Mm -hmm. People are asking if you have thoughts on telomere. Telomeres. I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's... Extending telomeres is currently, if I'm not mistaken, the number one lifespan uh, study ever. And so I just did my first gene therapy. It was uh, ranked number seven as the best ever done. Uh, had evidence of over a 30% uh, lifespan increase in mice. So I, we, mm. uh, yeah, so which we, we do take some of those studies and, and do translation to human. Do you but use this, these medicines or I guess they're, are they not applicable yet available to well, you? Yeah, the, the gene therapy I did is on a protein called uh, folostatin. And if you if you Google folostatin cow or folostatin dog, you'll see that they're like this incredibly muscled animal. So it's like a people associate this with bodybuilding, but it has all of the kinds of uh, benefit effects. So mm. um, yes, I think that uh, telomere gene therapy will be accessible in the next eighteen to twenty four months, mm. and it, it could dramatically change the landscape of uh, aging so the question the person who asked the questions is spot on it's like that's a really good area to focus on what what is the treatment what does it do the, the therapy i did is um it's delivered via a plasmid and so basically i got two injections on each side of my stomach and it just inserted uh the, some stuff inside my nuke uh, my cell and it produces more of this protein uh folostatin hmm. and by having higher levels, so I did this injection six, 14 days later, I measured my levels, it, it increased by 160%. And so the therapy worked in terms of increasing my levels. And uh, yeah, it's the most powerful therapy we've done to date. And what's cool about it is we've been trying to do gene therapy for the past two years, but we haven't done it because we've never found one that's safe enough because you do gene therapy and you can't turn it off. So if it starts running away and you want to stop it, you can't stop it. Mm. And that can lead to cancer. And so we, this one has an off switch, a kill switch. So if you don't like the situation, you can just kill it mm. with tetra, tetracycline. And so these new gene therapies, this is what I'm talking about is like, I, I'm going to go from crazy to trendy in some incredibly short period of time. When these things start hitting, people will be like, oh, damn, okay, uh, this is real, it's accessible, it's easy. Like these gene therapies are very powerful and they're coming. So like it is like, I'm telling you it is here and I would encourage all of you to don't die. Like just every single don't day, die, everybody. Be, be, be mindful. Uh, this we're potentially sitting after four and a half billion years on this earth. 
we are at the cusp of, the, of potentially the most exciting moment in the history of this galaxy. It's us in this moment. I want to be around for it. I mean, whatever it is, I want to see it. You ever thought about the, the idiot who's the last person to die? Like, what a loser. <laughs> and he's just like the last one and everyone else gets to live forever. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, sometimes I cry myself to sleep. They'll think about that's my parents, you know, like my parents are so like, that is a sad twist on us. They're like, they're like seventies. Right. And so like, yeah. I'm, I'm desperately trying to keep my parents alive. Like they joke, they're like, Brian, look, we appreciate it, but we get a package every day from you. Sometimes it's too much. Like you, right. you got to, you know, like, <laughs> so, but no, I, I really, I want my parents to live. Uh, we're so close to these breakthroughs. Uh, that is interesting. That is really cool. Sucks to be old at this point, <laughs> but uh, it sucks to be old at any point. Um, there's another question here from chat about uh, somebody wanted to know, are you, are you how familiar with like AI and all this kind of stuff? You follow all that? I do. So somebody asks if you agree, well, Ray Kurzweil's singularity prediction. I don't know if you're, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Ray's a friend. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? I'm trying. He predicts the singularity will coincide with the next epoch, the merger of human technology with human intelligence. After the singularity, he says the final epoch will occur. The universe wakes up. He says. <laughs> thoughts. Yeah. I um, I think this is the most <clears throat> exciting time in four point five billion years to exist on this <clears throat> earth, and. Uh, Man, what an exciting prospect. Yeah. Um, and Ray has been, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Ray's been modeling out the future for a few decades. He's tried to take the guesswork out of it and he's tried to say, all right, mathematically, if we model out the elements that contribute to the power of computational intelligence, like transistors and, you know, a whole bunch of things, how can you think about modeling out what intelligence does at what stages? And so he's modeled out, I think the singularity is going to happen in uh, 2029, if I'm not mistaken, like six years. And this is, you know, whether Ray's right or wrong, doesn't really matter. It's not 500 years. And it is here right now. And that's why I go back to this don't die philosophy is if we really are on this cusp of some explosion in intelligence that's going to change our fabric of reality. The only thing we care about is not dying. That's the only thing intelligence cares about once it just gets to a certain stage. Mm -hmm. And so that includes don't die individually, don't kill each other, don't kill the planet. And when AI is here, you want to align it so you don't die, so it doesn't kill you. So that's again why I think this is, what is the singular thing in existence that we care about? And in, I think don't die is just a little bit ahead of its time in terms of like, it will make sense. Uh, you know, Every day it will make a bit more sense with the reality of where things are at in the world. But once intelligence reaches a certain stage, uh, that's all it cares about is its continued existence. And so singularity being like the point where AI becomes like able to forward its own intelligence, uh, is that what it is? And it just becomes like an exponential increase in computer intelligence? Yeah, for, for a layman's uh interpretation, it's like when we merge with computational intelligence and we're not quite sure where we begin and it ends, we're just one thing. Hmm. Hmm. So what does that look like though? You're talking about yeah. like putting computer chips in the human brain and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we already have it in our smartphones today. If you look at our usage and how much we rely upon it for information and emotional soothing and entertainment and arousal, we're already pretty tightly coordinated with our tech, with our technology. And as it become more, becomes more ubiquitous, but even it doesn't even have to be a chip in the brain. I mean, you think about people taking like Ozempic, you know, like even though that's for weight loss, it's a pill that fundamentally changes your relationship with food. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have hunger anymore and your body drops weight. That pill is changing you as a human. It changes your conscious experience. That's just one pill. And you look at the ability we have to now create uh, drugs. It's phenomenal. And so we'll be able to, to alter our conscious experience. We'll be able to alter the way we understand reality. Like these things are all coming to uh, reality. Um, after I sold Braintree Venmo, I, I invested um, a lot of money in deep tech, which is like synthetic biology, precision chemistry, like these deep science areas. 
And these companies are doing things like they're building molecules atom by atom, like Legos. Mm. We have that kind of ability to, to build these structures or synthetic biology. You can take an organism like E. coli and you can reprogram it so it manufactures rose oil for you. So instead of growing a rose oil plant, fertilizing it, harvesting it, get the rose oil, you just have biology build it for you. Mm -hmm. So we already have these ability to engineer the physical and biological and digital world. So we have our fingers on our ability to literally program reality at every single layer. Mm -hmm. And this is when it happens when you start merging increasingly closer our uh, our tools of intelligence and ourselves this is where it gets into this um, tapestry of we're not quite sure where the boundary conditions are for ourselves and others and intelligence. Yeah. The, the dystopian, um, you know, prediction of that is basically just that this high level tech is only available to the ultra wealthy where you get, because I would imagine at, at first it would be extraordinarily expensive and hard to do correctly when the technology first comes out, as with all technology mm -hmm. usually is. But then, well, like, once you get this ability, you kind of, there's a runaway, there's kind of an exponential running away factor. And so, you know, that combined with, like, the ability to, like, engineer the intelligence of your babies, which is going to be something that rich people will have access to soon, I believe, and stuff like that. It seems like there is a risk I see in the dystopian uh, version of the future where there's not just a disparity in wealth, but also a disparity in longevity, technology, like uh, 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 medical to the point of like almost survival, different world. You're just in a different world completely, you know? And like, how do you catch up once you've shot off on that rocket before mm -hmm. them? Because the growth is so fast once you, mm -hmm. the singularity happens. Yeah, this is where I think it's a, a unique time to exist because in <clears throat> any other time period, I think it would have been reasonable to map out what you said. And basically what you, your assumptions were, you said that you believe the current systems of human behavior and status and social class and wealth and access are going to map over to the future. And that mapping the future just means it it takes some better things and it runs them down their course. And I'm suggesting um, we cannot map anything that we understand to be reality today into this future. We are no longer the alpha intelligence. And while we are the ones building artificial intelligence, it's not going to stay in our domain uh, in perpetuity. It's going to take on some amorphous direction, like something that no one can predict. And I don't think we can say anything about what we will care about, what societal rules will be, what our ethics and morals will be. I just don't think we're going to have that. We're not going to be in that position of clear authority like we are right now, like we have been building society. And it breaks our brains to think about this because this is the only reality we've ever, we've ever understood. But when you look at the situations where artificial intelligence has been truly applied to certain areas, it breaks all rules. Like you take it when it played Alpha Go. It beat the 19-time world champs and champ of the game Go. And it got in there in a few hours. It broke the game Go. Thousands of years of human genius uh, was, was uh, triumphed by this artificial intelligence and it played from a different dimension. And you now take these increasingly powerful tools. It's going to rewrite reality in every way. And so again, like you come back to, okay, what can we say about the future that's even remotely intelligent? Don't die. Outside of that, I don't know if we can say anything intelligent, assume anything for any reason. Okay. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I do feel that there's an element of convenience to that, uh, you know what I mean? To, to that excuse to, to any of the challenging questions. However, I do know, I do understand also where you're coming from. I'll say, um, uh, is there anything you want to share with us? Anything you want to tell us uh, that is going on before we, we say goodbye yeah i mean i, I want to say that um you know the people dunking on me it's cool i mean so so carry on like you know it's all it's all in good fun uh i think it's great i love dunking on myself so clowning me is cool um i just want to say <clears throat> sincerely to each one of you um this is real I, and like you know doing basic things in your life like going to bed on time getting exercise eating well 
uh, they can make meaningful differences in your conscious experience of life. And I just would encourage you to prioritize your health and wellness, in particular your sleep. Make it your number one life priority. Mm. Nothing's more important. And nothing will make you a better person than getting high quality sleep routinely. And it's just like having you know good physique. It doesn't just happen by on its own. You have to work every day and work really hard at it. The same is true with sleep. And the most important thing each one of us can have is a clear head and you know regulated emotions in life. And when we're sleep deprived, life is just increasing, you know, pretty challenging. So yeah, I hope this conversation actually, if it did anything, I hope it encourages you to invest in your your uh, health, just if, at a minimum, because it improves the quality of your life. There it is. That's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. sleep, guys. <laughs> Don't sleep on sleep, they say. But I'll tell you, I, I appreciate you calling in. I think you're super interesting, dude. Appreciate very much that you're, um, that you have like a, a, a good attitude about everything and all the you know, the, the trolls online and stuff and that you're self-aware and playful with it. I think that's, that's the, the perfect way to, to, uh, deal with all this stuff. But I, 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 th I think you're onto something really uh, exciting and I'll continue to follow, uh, as I have been. Yeah. Thanks guys for having me. This was fun. Cool. Thank yeah. You thank you so in. much. And, uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk again soon. Uh, yeah, cool. and, uh, and we'll, we'll touch back every 10 years until one of us dies. <laughs> 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 all right all right bye, bye brian thanks for the call thanks brian thank you thank you <laughs> have, have a good night interesting not, fella yeah definitely yeah he's not he's not he's good i like what he's i like his whole thing you know what i mean i mean rich people they can just sit up in their towers but he i feel like you know he is trying to do something obviously self-serving, but it does have benefits to, mm -hmm. to everybody, I think, potentially. So, there it is, Brian. He did sidestep that, um, that question that you asked at the end, I thought was a really good one. Yeah. And um, I was he right. didn't have a good answer for that. You think that I, I, I was right? And yeah, I'm like, no, I yeah. think that's a real concern, really absolutely. Convenient to, yeah. He just think, all of a sudden can't, can't think about it. I think that answer came up too much <coughs> of like- Every time. It's almost like, well, I can't tell what will be in the future, so nothing matters. Well, mm -hmm. it, like I understand where I he's understand coming it from. Too, and I, However, the idea of an AI revolution creating like a perfect uh, communistic classless society yeah. is pretty much zero. The more likely outcome is that it's gonna make rich people richer and more powerful. And, and harder to catch up, like you said, and just like, like a runaway effect survive, for a certain class of people. Yeah. But what can you do? It's unavoidable. This is, this is what it is. But, um, but yeah, really cool. And the one thing about sleep, where he's like prioritizing getting sleep. It's just when you have little ki kids, it's like you, <laughs> you probably, literally can. Yeah, he would give you a pass probably for that. But I, most people have some stuff Something. going on in their life. You I know? mean, I, so, can, I can't just get in bed and fall asleep, though. I'm not like that, too. I don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's like he said, oh, maybe with yeah, practice sleep. you get... I can't. <laughs> That's me every night. That's a damn nightmare. And Brian, I want to sleep. <clears throat> Any thoughts? Interesting food for thought. Mm -hmm. I am also getting like <coughs> my internal intuition <coughs> is feeling skeptical of things, but at the same time, I find it interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's harming anybody. So no. Th so there's no harm being done. Yeah. As far as I know, I haven't looked in his basement, but <laughs> as far as we know, yeah. Um, oh my God. Uh, heat in my Avery Mega Awesome Nerd said, as long as AI gives me Fortnite, I will obey our AI over Fortnite. We need super Fortnite. As long as my brain is zapped into Fortnite, we're good. And I had one other thought that I kept thinking, like, it seems like his life right now seems too difficult to the point where I wouldn't care that much to try to do everything that he does. Mm -hmm. And I think to make something really revolutionary, it needs to be like easy and accessible. Like the way a Zempic is like just something you take and it changes your life. Right. I think real progress will be when it's like that easy mm. and you don't have to put so much effort and like change your whole life. Meaning it needs to be about this project. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's, I, I don't know if 
I think what I was getting is that there's a lot of little things that contribute, but it seems like there's a few big things mm -hmm. that make all the difference. I don't know what this experimental medicine coming up is, but that sounds really, really incredible, potentially. Mm -hmm. You know? Seems like a nice guy, though. Mm -hmm. We like Brian. I We're a fan so. of Brian's here on the H3 podcast. <laughs> we love all Brian's. Um, <laughs> except Brian Singer. We do not like Brian Singer. <laughs> We do not like him. All right, we got to thank our sponsors, and then we will um, we do get into the. And then cost. I have a surprise for you guys. For me, for both of you. Is it Ann Bros? Hmm? Is it Ann Brothers? Well, let's do the ad read, <gasps> and I'll bust it out. Fuck. Is it? Is it? Better be. Is it? Dude? What kind of surprise? It's, 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 it's not a surprise. surprise. You're not you saying no. Is. You're not is saying it? no. But is it? I'm. If, I cannot confirm or deny anything. Oh but my what? god. Man, I'm so hungry. I want Ambrose. We gotta order. I sandwiches. wanted chocolate right oh, before yes. the show. I was like looking for chocolate Dan, everywhere. Dan, you heard Ela was begging for chocolate. Dan, you didn't have paper. I got the let's Ambrose. Do no, the but ad read. Okay, don't would play you like the me. surprise now? Would you like <laughs> yeah. the surprise now? Yeah. No, let's do the ad read first. I don't okay. want it to. I don't want it to get pushed back anymore. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you so much to Hexclad. <laughs> I am such a huge fan of these guys. First of all, thank you for supporting us. Consider supporting. Why am I doing that? Consider supporting them uh, during this holiday season. You know, I keep trying to have my pan in here, but I, t I need it at home. I take it home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, where's the pan? Oh, I took none, it home. None of us I mean, that have them it. want to leave them here because we they're use our it. best pans. And I never bring anything home. How much shit do I leave here all the time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your wallet all the time. Your like my clothes all the time. Yes. Shrek ears for my Crocs. <laughs> Um, huge, huge fan of their beautiful products. Uh, let me see here. Um, let me pull up one of these videos. We Let's got a little bit from a, from a little guy named Gordon. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, mm -hmm. Gordon Ramses, Ramses the third. <laughs> Ramses. I fell in love with Hexclads a few years back. A chef friend of mine. <laughs> sent me a 12 inch non-stick pan as a gift. It was a joy to work with something that I took to immediately. As a front runner in the industry, they're raising the bar. My level of perfection connects with that bar. And more importantly, as a collaboration together, I think <coughs> we will become one of the most exciting brands on the planet. You said it, wow. bro, you said it. Here, let me go to the website. It's like this, incre this really cool technology where um, there's like hexagonal shape in the pan, mm -hmm. and it's uh, non-stick, even cooking. It doesn't scratch. They say scratch proof, and yep. so far I've been using that thing for pro over a year now. No scratches. No, it's perfectly clean. Same here. Mine's That's still it, looking. right? It's crazy. Once you clean it, it's like a brand new pot. It's crazy. Yeah, I I I've never owned a pan like that, and we've bought nice stuff before. Yep. But uh, this one looks brand new after a year of frequent use. It is it is really quite something. Mm -hmm. I got a whole bunch of them. I've been doling it out to my family. Everybody's mm -hmm. loving it. Everybody <laughs> wants more. It's hex clad. It's all happening. Great gift. An incredible gift uh, during this holiday season. But yeah, if you guys are in the market for some pans, one that's going to last you a long, long time, consider going with hex clad. Um... Find your forever cookware at Hexclad and get 10% off at hexclad.com slash h3. Nice. Yes, sir. That's hexclad.com slash h3. And, you know, listen, Gor if it's good enough for Gordon, it's good enough for me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? As long as he's not cooking any grilled cheese in it. Mm. <laughs> you seen that? Uh, yeah. I think I know horrific. what you're talking about. Uh, horrific. <laughs> Just horrific. But anyway, thank you so much to Hexclad. We love you and thank you for sponsoring us. And please consider supporting them. Thank you. Thank you. Love Hexclad. I'm sure do. We are a Hexclad family. Thank you to GameSups. GamerSups. Sigma brain. Sigma Give it up. Brain. Give it up. Charge up right now. This is our proprietary, exclusive H3 podcast <laughs> flavor, spicy margarita, but we call it Sigma Brain. 
Don't think it's spicy though. Don't when I say sp spicy margarita, it's not spicy at all. It's mm -hmm. just a fun little sensation. It's yeah. a vibe. Yeah, but it's a perfect nice um lemon lime perfect balance of citrus and sweetness and mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, sugar free. It's caffeinated and uh it's high, super hydrating. It's enriched with all kinds of essential vitamins and minerals. This is the ultimate drink. And it's really good. Excuse me. <laughs> and there is Your a excuse? big caffeinated one as well. True. Um, they've, they're running some pretty cool stuff here. Let's see. GamerSubs is launching our new waifu cup, Heaven and Hell. With matching hoodie and sweatpants. Oh my goodness. I don't think I can show you guys the photos because <laughs> they're very graphic. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't... Here, I'll show you, Gila. Let's see. Like, that's a lot. Really? We can't show that? You don't think so? Come on, YouTube. I don't know. I just... I don't know if I'm going to risk it. <laughs> that one's whatever. Well, hold on. There's ones with, like, some big-ass anime titties. <laughs> basically. You know. That ain't illegal. And Big-ass mm -hmm. anime... Hell no. Hell no. Make big anime titties legal. <laughs> um, so they're giving away... Uh, giving away... Or no, they've got the new hoodie and cups. They're also running a deal here. You get items for free. The deals do stack. Here's the... Here's the platforms here. The tiers. $30 free sticker pack. Cute. $50 free set of gaming sleeves. What is... Gaming sleeves? A gaming sleeve. Is that to like keep prevent chafing? Do you know what that is, love? I've yeah, never yeah, heard probably, of that. Probably uh, like a um, mouse, or like a, when you move the mouse, or shit like huh. that. Wow. Okay. Oh no, you know what? It's just to make sure you have a straight wrist. I think <coughs> when you're moving your your wrist. Oh. Uh, Wait for real? That's my guess. Hold I'm on, let's sure. look it up. I'm actually just curious. I think it just looks cool. <laughs> I thought I was a gamer, but apparently not. It's just epic gamer moment. Here. I don't know. Here's... I do. I think it does have some kind of purpose. Because you really do fuck your wrist up if you play a lot of games. That's uh, true. Look at I that. have massive wrist issues for a while. Uh. Huh. Let's get those gamer sleeves on, people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Be the ultimate gamer. Sleeve I up. Born Always use protection when you game. <laughs> yeah. $75, you get a free shirt. $100, you get a free Guardian Angel Waifu jug. And those aren't the only jugs Ooh. you'll be seeing. <laughs> Hell yeah. And $150, you get a free sweater. And if you spend $150, you get all that stuff. Wow. Basically for free, yeah. But we, we were in the lab. We calculated the perfect flavor. We went back and forth for a long time to come up with Sigma all Brain. So I flavors? hope you guys will enjoy it. Give it a try. I'm pretty sure you will love it. Go to Gamersups. Dot gg and use the code h3 to get 10% off your first order that is gamersubs.gg use the code h3 to get 10% off your first order thank you thank you no 10% off your order period i don't think it even needs to be your first one okay. code h3 to get 10% off your order yeah any order there it is bobby's your uncle huh? wow, 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 wow. all right everybody thank you to our sponsors please consider supporting them thank you I have to run to the back Okay, well, Dan's gonna do his surprise. No, she needs to be here for it. All right, Eli's running to the bathroom. Here, um, one second. Um, there's another surprise um, for you right now that we could do in the meantime. Here we go. It's my, it's my boy. It's Gabe. How's it going? Looking good, huh? Sipping on mm -hmm. some soda. Uh, today's my cheat day, baby. Is it? Today's my cheat day. Oh, I love, I love the cheat day. Are you at Flukies? Don't dox him. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Well, he's not anyways. What do you eat? I'm, I'm having a slice of pizza. It's my cheat day, baby. Nice. How many slices are you going to kick down? Fuck. Just one. Just one. Wow. That is so... Responsible just to have one slice that that's impressive. That's not easy to do Yeah That's awesome, man, and is that a full-bodied cola or is that a diet cola? The diet cola that's my boy wow. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You're doing great. You're killing it Appreciate the love support Of course always buddy. Are we gonna see you at the live show? You'll be there, right? Sure. 
yeah. sure I'm going to be. We there. have a we have yeah. a we have a fun gag planned for us. All right. I don't know if you've <laughs> you been briefed on our fun gag. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, it'd be fun. It's gonna be really fun. Um, we'll prov. Yeah, gonna make a joke, but I backed off it real fast. But Gabe, um, hey. nice, nice to see you. Any plans nice this weekend? I'm going to my cousin's party, and then I'm having my two tailored for the live show. Ah, nice. Very good. My red suit, baby. Hell yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you there, Gabe. And, uh, well, we'll talk to you next Friday before that, but um, always nice to hear from you. Enjoy your cheat meal. We love, we love you. We love your beautiful face. You're doing so well, and we're all very happy. Thank you. With all my love and support you guys did, you know, I made it through and many more, many more days to come or months. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right, Gabe. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you, buddy. Sure. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, all right, Gabe. Take care. All right. All right. Ciao. Ciao, Abella. All right. Thank you. Let's get to the chocolate. <laughs> Nice what? Date. Let's get to the chocolate. What's then. the surprise? Well, what chocolate? All right. What's the surprise then? Give me one sec. I'll go get it. Okay, okay, it's okay. got to be. He's just Anson's. gonna go okay, get okay. the chocolate. It has to be Anson's. There's no other possibility. Quite frankly, if it's anything else, I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> I'm gonna flip the table yeah. and leave. I know. I'm gonna quit the show. <clears throat> I'm ending the show. Yeah. Permanently. I'm going home. Oh my god, I got a sneak peek. Okay. You guys yeah, I recognize that bag. Thank god. Let's go! Wow! Do you have some, or is this? Uh, do you guys have some back there? This right, is it. Oh, and I uh, save some for Sam. She's downstairs. Oh, she God. made sure to tell okay. me when I grabbed it from it. Card from Jeff. Here, let's see. Jingle balls, almond praline, and peppermint ganache. Oh, that's the new Ooh. thing. He awesome. said. Yeah. And then there's their uh, their winter box in there too. Wait, there's only one box in here. Honored to be the official chocolatier of the podcast. Just one box. Just we one will box. keep the Something, chocolate flowing. What the fuck? Did somebody steal it? Chef oh, Andy, brother Phil, and Mark. Wow. Okay, this is not keeping the chocolate flowing. <laughs> this is a room full of. I just makes me kind of mad. Just makes me kind of angry, you know. Who delivered no. it? Oh shit! I take it back. No, no, no. Okay. Somebody fess up. Not somebody, it. Somebody. Somebody opened it? <laughs> yes. Who did that? Who did that? Are you serious? Yeah, it was all oh, in the bag. That's why I just grabbed, grabbed the bag and this Hold was on. sitting over there. Wait. Cam, you look, just, you look suspicious. I'm hungry. Give me one right now. I don't care who did that. I just uh, want one right well, now. Okay. Yo, to be, this to be fair, this looks like the perfect to be fair it, is, it does appear to be sealed. So unless they did oh. some sort of surgical entry here. It's sealed, guys. Yeah, it's sealed. but somebody was digging through. Somebody was rustling. This they just probably took a little look. Wow. Here's what's in the bag. I don't know who would do that. This is one of my favorite <laughs> things they've made. Wow. This is so good. You guys gotta try this. Fuck. Mm. Peppermint ganache. Holy fuck. You want one more? I'll take one more and then pass it. Yeah, pass that. Wow. This is so good. So I believe that he told me Thank those uh, those will be available next Monday. They're dropping the the praline or whatever whatever it was you just said. Mm -hmm. Pepper, peppermint. Oh my god. And there's like an almond thing so in there good. too, right? Half it's mint, so half chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, dog. That's crazy, right? Mm. The outer shell is really good too. Mm -hmm. Which side is which? Do we know? No. I want know. the almond one. No, they're all, those are all the same. Oh, they're all the same? Yeah. This is the other one, I think. At least I had two. They're both the same. Oh. Ooh. This tastes, is, tastes like after eight. This is why we're here. Mmm. Mmm. This is why we This is why we do what we do, people. <laughs> <laughs> this is why, why I wake we up. Wake up. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, it tastes like beef jerky. Let's try some of these new ones. 
I don't know which one to go for. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I got that one. Mm, good. Yeah. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mmm. -hmm. I feel like I only ever mm -hmm. want to eat half. Because I want to try another one, but I'll right. die if I eat all the chocolate I want. Wow. This one has like coffee in it. Oh, is that what it is? So good. Mmm. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh, hit it. Don't do it to him. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try one more and I'll pass it around. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Brian Johnson, this is living, dude. Yeah. This is Talk real this living. Is living. This, is this is real living. You know what, Brian? Who wants to live forever? <laughs> Who wants to live forever? I got the gold one. So true. I mean, if rich people started living forever, that would not be a net good. What a nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. I'm like, how many of the younger generation is like, I just want the old people to die off so we can progress? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really mm. good question. Thank you. How many of the younger generation is just like, I want a house? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, let's focus on that. What's the point of living forever if you're... You know, well, more time to save. <laughs> I did kind of want to ask him, but you, you asked a similar question, so it felt a little redundant. But, you know, there is like a huge body of thought and philosophy and religion on the concept of death. And, you know, oftentimes sort of coming to a conclusion that death is something that actually gives a... Uh, meaning to a human's life mm -hmm. and um That's there's true. so much like um fiction and uh uh and non-fiction but the you know so many are stories are down. are about the curse of immortality mm -hmm. and like Absolutely. Death, and how it's like a monkey's paws wish mm -hmm. to live forever and everything and i i wonder if he's like that that's just cope oh, i wonder damn. if that's kind yeah. of like his attitude he doesn't like, think he's living forever though i find it interesting he would like if he was like 200 yeah, I mean, he seemed some, like, it's funny saying he's realistic. Uh, maybe not yeah. necessarily realistic is the right word, but seems um, seems to hedge what he's saying a little bit in that, you know, maybe maybe not forever, but I we'll start with just extending our lives to, I, you know, 200 or something. I did get a feeling that he's very well trained already on what to say and what not to say kind of Yeah, thing. I'm sure he gets a lot he's of a smart questions. Guy. Yeah. yeah, he's a smart guy. He should read Tuck Everlasting. I read that in fifth grade book club about immortality and how you should have won it. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's one of the great themes of uh, mythology is that the gods are jealous of the men because right. they appreciate life. And because enjoy you life have because they're more something to lose. Exactly. Because you know it doesn't last forever. <laughs> I only want to live forever if I got a dog that lives forever. That'd be sick. Right. <laughs> That's so much heartbreak. Imagine that living forever. I mean, honestly, how many times can you get you your heart focus broken? Focus on that first. Focus on making dogs live longer. That's mm -hmm. that right. could be the. They're priority. more deserving Before. of immortality. Than yeah, us. yeah. Well, hopefully, whatever we inject in us, we can just put in inject in our doggies. Oh, hold on! A new challenger enters. Lola Road says, "I own a vegan bakery called Chocolate and the Chip. How do I get all cookies <laughs> and edible cook? Wait." How can I get you guys cookies and edible cookie dough? First of all, that's such a cute name. Lola? Well, that too, but chocolate and the chip, I mean. Oh, chocolate <laughs> and the chip. They're vegan. Um, reach out. I would. I want your chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> if you make oh, anything sweet, just reach yeah. out, dude. Yeah, there's a pregnant yeah. woman Open door, here. open door. <laughs> open door policy on anyone cooking, <laughs> making candy. We are hungry all day, every day. Dude, I gotta say. Food for camp. These ones were Thank nuts. You. <laughs> Did you guys agree the balls were nuts? I love right? it. They're good. They're very it's good. Dangerous very very, very good. good. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm loving this now because now I know which colors I like. <laughs> I just immediately went for the s'mores one uh, and the caramel one. And I just hit them so good. Good memory. I don't remember what they are. Yeah. I feel I'm still going in blind, I feel like. Mm. Um awesome. Oh, we actually ordered food today forever? or are yeah, we let's, like full from this? No, let's order right now. It's okay. 3.30. We got to do it so now let's, or never. So let's save this for dessert. Wait, which is the one that you like, love? 
It's the three circle one. That's the smallest oh, one. That one's <laughs> it's all gone. I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, see, none of those I like. <laughs> what is this one? You know what this one is? The baby blue? See, that's one of the ones I don't like, so it's something weird. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I don't like those. I like. There's three circles and there's a brown slash red one. Dark blue? Dark blue? I don't. Yeah, oh, that, that's. That one's good. It's like a nougat. N nougat? Oh, that's good. Right? Mm. Yeah, it is, right? Oh, yeah. You have like perfect chocolate memory. Yeah. I'm, I'm dialed in. <laughs> oh, that one's like a graham cracker one. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Mm. That one's busting. All right, so. I love that one. Let's go ahead and get into all kinds of other fun stuff here. This isn't the Brian Johnson show, after all. It's yeah. the uh, Ace well, Rape God yeah, You know what I'm saying? Probably get into the Selena thing sooner than later because I hear there's a lot to cover. Mm -hmm. And we're already uh, Wait, halfway through the show. The sandwich place doesn't deliver here? But we literally ordered from there, like... I remember, last but... Last week. No problem. The close one is closed today. What? That was... It's Friday afternoon, man. What country? Is this what America? are they doing? I don't know. I don't Why were they close when we were live? Are they close on like every Friday? You guys, I don't, I'm, I'm, not I'm getting huge, by the way. Oh yeah, Ela's getting big. Ah. There's a baby cooking. There's a baby in there. <clears throat> really big. All right, let's move on. We got a scooter video, people. New scoot. New scoot. Who's this? Oh, we've seen. What do you suppose the story is here? <laughs> you know, what, what what was the what was the, what plan? Was the goal here? I think I missed what happened. Go ahead. Yeah. So we're it's a stormy day out there, wherever they are, and here he is, uh, Captain Ahab, <gasps> weathering the storm. <laughs> this guy bailed when he saw him fall. He's like, I'm running. <laughs> I think he was going to help. <laughs> Hell no, he wasn't. Look at him. He started walking away. Look at him. He's piecing out. And then he's like, hold on. He One more shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, aye, aye, aye. what is happening? I'm genuinely wanting to... I mean, to... people always stand too close when that kind of stuff's going on, right? So, it's a super high tide. This looks like stairs that go to the beach, usually, mm -hmm. during normal yeah. tide. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he's on, Ooh. I think, what is usually... Some kind of catwalk, walking path. He has a part, a scooter partner in back, potentially. The I, floor is already wet, though. You can tell the water has reached there. Already. Certainly, yeah, certainly. <laughs> Who's this in back? Is this another mobility scooter? I think that's a Vespa, like a two-wheel. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, but like, also, he could have he easily taken a bigger loop. And also, why did he stop there? Look, he stops there. <laughs> You know. Aye, aye, aye. Rumor is he uh, washed out to sea and we haven't heard from him since. Just kidding. I don't know. I'm That's sure he's not fine. the rumor. Yeah, he's There's no I'm idea. sure he's... You're starting that rumor. <laughs> the rumor is he was uh, washed out. But no, he's fine, I'm sure. Right? Yeah. He... No, yeah, he survived. He survives. Of course. <laughs> he, he grew up to be Aquaman. <laughs> he grew up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fifty-year-old man. I look like. <laughs> um, Keemstar uh, is back in the news. You guys know I love to talk about our boy. Um, let's see. He's now doing boomer conservative takes about rainbows and Fortnite are apparently pissing him off. This what? is a wild tweet. Wait, isn't that a Lego set? Yeah, it, there's a collab now in Fortnite with Lego. Oh, okay. So he goes, he goes, what is this Fortnite? But it's not, okay, it nah. isn't Fortnite. Nah. nah, what is this Fortnite? Uh, here it is. Ah, the rainbow! Ah! Ah! What's happening? I'm turning gay! My kids are turning gay! Turn it off! Fortnite, what are you doing? What's the agenda? The Jews have clearly put this in Fortnite to turn our children gay. <laughs> I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> That's the no, I'm not. Or what? Actually, I'm not. 
<laughs> the uh, there's a reader's note. Actually, I'm not. There it is. <laughs> this is the Everyone is Awesome Lego set released in 2021. Oh, it's not even recent. It's uh, an older Lego set, but it's just put in Fortnite now. So it was a Pride Month celebration. Yeah, I've seen that set already a while ago. What does it mean that it's in Fortnite? I don't know. Fortnite just has everything now. But what does that mean? <laughs> no. It just sits here in the map like this? Oh, someone probably just built it. Oh, they, so made, they made Lego in Fortnite. Oh, someone just built this? Yeah. Probably. So it's well, not even Fortnite. No. no, it's in Fortnite, but I think <laughs> it's just previewing the new Lego there it is. collab. Like they just they were showing a bunch of different like uh scenes for the opening trailer of this of these new modes they're doing. Yeah, uh, well I guess so. Shit. Ah we gotta hit the button. Will that make me ungay? <laughs> no, doesn't Fortnite. have that capability, I'm afraid. Keemstar is also really out there on the internet, um reinventing himself. Oh god. Is this the perfect controller laughing crying emoji? All right. What do we what is this watch? We're going to do something on. about the exclamation mark emoji. Hold on, what is this watch? This? Yeah. Well, I don't think that's Keem. Oh, it's not Keem. It's Kim. just yeah, some no. dumb boomer nine okay, gag me. I man. thought it was like Kim and one of his nah, girlfriends. Nah. <laughs> um No. Just a little check in on Keemy. Ke dreamy Keemy. What do you want to do about what the about exclamation mark? What about the exclamation? Yeah. I'm just saying, it's just that you've noticed this, right? <laughs> this has become like all every clickbait post has to have the double oh. red emoji exclamation mark. There's a bunch I of accounts that do it. That. Part of the language of the internet now of oh. like, I'm being dumb and obnoxious. And we don't like it. I, mean, I don't like it. I don't like it. I think we I'm have hating. bigger problems then. People are reacting to my messages in Discord with it right now. Stop! <laughs> Stop! See, it gets Why? Your, it gets your <laughs> attention, I wanted to. <laughs> I like him. I don't uh, mind it. They are emphasizing this uh, food suggestion, <laughs> yeah. though. Do you want to comment on that? Say what? Any thoughts? Thoughts on food? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, what you guys said is fine. Mendocino? Mm, bottom. Right. But you don't want Mendo? It's a chain. <laughs> it's a chain. All righty. What did you say, love? I said button. Button? Because you, yeah. you said you the name of the... Oh, button. no, there's a billion of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Right, I want to okay. get something that's not super dirty, but also tasty. I do feel like it's going to be so hard to eat their stuff on the show. Oh, uh, God. Well, it could arrive right at the end. It probably will at this mm -hmm. rate. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. If uh, it's just This is for the, uh, the good old folks who don't care about nothing. I can build a sandwich? What is that? I wonder what that's like. Mm. <laughs> what a concept. Wait, that's a lot of power. I Hold on. Now they're all do doing that. in the chat to annoy me. <laughs> all right. What's well, today? it doesn't annoy me when just like you're just doing it in that way. <coughs> All right, I'm just, there's 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 a there's a subgenre of uh, of post that has emerged. I'm gonna make my own sandwich, you guys. Hell yeah! What's okay. the what's the fantastic the bread that's good? Is it a ciabatta? It is. We it's love ciabatta. We love ciabatta. Folks. Ciabatta. Do we want cheese? All oh, their sandwiches are so meat heavy. Bread yeah, that's true. They have a good uh, caprese, mo mozzarella caprese, I think it's called. Yeah. The yeah. vegan banh mi is so good. Yeah, I think I got a good. That's that what I'm one. getting. Dude, this is a I weird. That from that. I'm waking a weird ass fucking one here. Hell yeah. I'm getting the shimichurri steak and bacon. Oh my god, that's so yummy. <laughs> With the shibata. Let's see, I want cilantro, romaine. Are you like. Cilantro, romaine. Oh, I'm doing it here. That's not how it works. <laughs> not how it Wait, works. I am logged into something though. I wonder if it's it does, the same account. Somebody's already Probably doing not. the order. You gotta just. Wait, it'll just... consolidate for both logged in. I don't know if it's the same login. That's the question, isn't it? It is the question. I don't believe because usually Sam does it, but she's not here right it's now. It's a different account. Yeah. Hmm. That's a shame. So who's taking the order? I think Lenny is. Uh, no, we we're just talking about it in chat, Sam. Says, so oh, here, let me account. let me dictate this to you, and you okay, guys just can, say what you want. You guys can gauge this because this is a super wild card sandwich, starting with shaved roast chicken breast. Okay. Bread choice: ciabatta. Okay. Bread prep: toasted. That's a good one. Cheese: <laughs> cotija cheese. In a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. It's 
fucking crazy. Do you want accents? Herb aioli. Sure. Give me an accent on that, baby. Do they mean like sauce? An accent? Yeah, they're being a little snooty about it. An accent? Uh... <sighs> um. Do you, would you like fruits or veggies? I want cilantro. I want pick or pickled onions. Mm. You don't like pickled onions? I would skip that one. I fuck with pickled onions first. Though. Okay, then do red onions. And pickled onions. That's oh, too much. God. That's too much. Which? Red onions. Okay. And... Spinach. Okay. Good. Premium add-ons? None. <laughs> Good. That's my sandwich. Doesn't wow. sound that crazy, does Not it? Not bad. It's I'm just considering maybe switching the cheese, but... I don't know what... I'm. Am I taking a risk with that? But I... I usually oh. like it when it comes. What does it look like? It's like... It's like a kind of a powdery one. It's right? kind of crumbly, yeah. How is, I wonder how that's gonna integrate in there. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. Yeah. I'm going for it. Fantastic. All right, very good. And that's how the Cotija cheese crumbles. All right, where are we? Kentucky man makes hundred thousand dollars a year panhandling and pretending to be disabled. <laughs> this man, you mean, oh, you mean a hustler? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a Sigma? Sorry that you guys are not ready to see the truth. Oh, Alfredo's eating. Cute. Why that camera for? Chances are Disable. you've seen him. Try to get to the restaurant. Sympathized with his wheelchair, his drawn hands, his story. Oh, they're about to turn on him. They uh -oh. give me money. To get some eat. And if so, you're not alone. He's dedicated. If he's faking it. That actually is the truth. We did some research, and sure enough, Thompson's mother was the plaintiff in a 1993 lawsuit against Honda for a motorcycle accident. The wreck left him with limited mobility, but it certainly didn't make him mentally handicapped. And we knew better. What? He busted this bogus beggar right outside the police Ooh. department Yo. just minutes after a press conference ah. about him. Hey, you guys busted me. <laughs> oh, he doesn't give a fuck. No, he, he doesn't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa. Well, he is. It sounds like he is disabled physically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I and don't think it's artist. kosher though to do the other shtick. No. No. <laughs> the other part of this shtick is the. Oh. Yeah, I'm really good at it. Really oh, good. Freak. I clear about a hundred thousand dollars a year doing this. Yeah. Whoa. Does he pay tax on that? I wonder. Yeah, about sixty to a hundred. The thirty-year-old he said he's from voice. Austin, Texas. When the, when the IRS comes asking questions, he just <laughs> does the voice. <laughs> How do you report that income? I mean, you gotta report it. It's all cash, isn't it? Yeah, but like... Yeah. No, I know. There's He's a kind discrepancy. Of out himself a little there's, bit. there's a discrepancy in his... How he lives his life. Mm -hmm. Puts it in the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, we got we need answers here, fella. ...and has done the same thing there. He also says he's got a degree in speech-language pathology. He's combined that training with his wheelchair and found that he's using his <coughs> training for eating. You hear that? No, no, I'm speech not. therapy. Yeah. And just like that, my, my be, be, be boy, I'm just playing. I gotta go, y'all. Gotta make some money. Oh come on, she was Give back me at it again. You're fucking crazy. I gotta say that is pretty interesting. I mean, I guess that's probably the best way to respond instead of trying to like run away in the wheelchair and then. Having a chase scene and all that. They got me. <laughs> chase scene. So he ended up going to jail. Oh. And yeah, he oh. ended up related? He, um, so it says for panhandling. I mean so what is panhandling? You go to it's just begging on the street. That's jail for panhandling? Let me, let me see. Yeah, I just see I just saw this update right now. But yeah, he went to he went to jail and then he got out. I'll find out the reason why. But he he ended up doing it again. Mm. Panhandling goes to jail? All he knows. That can't be right. We were locking up panhandlers? Fuck me, dude. Uh, where does he live? What state? Kentucky. 
Kentucky panhandling. Wow. We don't take kindly to poor folk around here, boy. Uh. Okay, here. Uh, charged with criminal trespassing, soliciting unlawful compensation, disorderly conduct, that and one makes resisting more sense. arrest. Unlawful that compensation. That makes a hell of a lot more sense. Yeah. Resisting yeah. arrest? Jeez, what'd you do, dude? <laughs> but I don't trust the police. Fuck the police. Don't trust the police. How's a dude in a wheelchair resisting arrest? Give me a break. That's a well, bullshit charge. They slapped that on our boy. I mean, I don't know. You've seen how like scooters could go. <laughs> well, scooters have an engine. You could you could attempt to you could do manslaughter in a scooter. <laughs> you know, a <laughs> cab brother. <laughs> um, here is a nook has competition, and it's you'll never guess who it is. It's Vin Diesel. Check it out. Vin Diesel is competing. Oh, that was not Vin Vinny. <laughs> I'm the way my train to get run away. It's me, it's all in my dream. I could be in some bad nation, nation. Red Christmas Ooh. to carry my heart. I wow. love that. I like it. Wow. He has a nice rasp on his I face. want yeah. them to duet. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be special and powerful. Maybe it's cold outside. That mm -hmm. would be really something special. Wow. You know, Anuk's probably sang this before, right, Zach? We might be able to do a mashup. Oh. Has he done the, uh... It's George Michael, right? <laughs> I mean, if, it, if it's Christmas late, the man sung it. Yeah, he did it. He did it, Zach. Of course he did. Can we get a mashup before the end of the episode? Oh my god. Or Cam can do that. Yeah, can you send me the... You the on that, AB? Let's get him the sources here. And <laughs> Would Cam you be surprised to learn that I fucking hate that song? No way. Wow. <laughs> that Wham song? <laughs> I'd be more surprised to find out you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Dan? I'm gonna break your heart on Christmas. Oh my <laughs> god, it's just <laughs> the most annoying Christmas song ever. Well, no, actually, the Paul McCartney one is worse. No, That's it's not. Worst. I love that song. Oh my god, that is Which the worst. Is he goes, the um, he goes, uh... Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Hold on, let me get the lyrics. That's it. That's an iconic. That's the only Christmas song I like, frankly. Oh, I hate that one. God. How do you even, I, bro, you can dislike Paul McCartney. I don't care what. I, don't. I can. I and love I Paul McCartney, and that is the worst song he ever made. No, really? I've heard yes. worse. Christmas time. Yes. <laughs> the mood is right. The spirit's up. We're here tonight. Wait, you're missing the really obnoxious 80s, 80s uh, synths. Like, <laughs> God, I can't remember the the fucking the melody. Yeah. That only comes. Oh God, it's not yeah. terrible. Yeah. Simply having a wonderful Christmas <laughs> yeah. time. Oh, yes, he's God. got his bounce around. Simply <laughs> having a wonderful Christmas time. It's fun. The party's on. <laughs> the feelings here. <laughs> Come on, Dan. It's Paul McCartney. And with it, give me chestnuts any day. Listen, all I gotta say is we don't have any Hanukkah songs. <laughs> I'll There's take, a couple, but I'll they're not very any good. Of Adam the Sandler. Songs. Yeah. Eight crazy nights, bro. Everybody get together. We're gonna put on eight crazy nights. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take all the Christmas playlists. We do have the Nahava Nagila. No. That's mm. not even Hanukkah theme, though. Yeah. All right, so Cam, you're on that that mashup. Yeah, I'm downloading them right awesome. now. Awesome. Thanks, brother. That's gonna be good. And happy Hanukkah to everybody. Oh yeah, it's Hanukkah yesterday. Started yesterday. Yeah. It's actually so fun with the boys. We got a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. We wrapped presents for them. It's under the tree, so it's a little hybrid. Just we're doing for fun. yeah, hybrid holiday. Uh -huh. Just, just cause it's fun. We're just taking the fun elements from everything. Yeah. That's nice. And um, so yesterday they opened their first present. <laughs> so fun. So cute and fun. Nice. The yeah. Christmas tradition is pr pretty. It rules. It honestly, does. So. We Not did. We did both in my house too. Of you the, did. Uh, I have the split parents, so <laughs> yeah. Mom's family does Christmas. Dad's family does Hanukkah. So <laughs> we always have both going on. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, we just light the menorah it's and then just we go. So do the, fun. I don't know. The holiday season here is so fun. Yeah, it's we, such a vibe for sure. We don't have that in Israel. Definitely. 
Well, here, here we actually have Smokey Robinson did a, a Hanukkah tribute. <laughs> I just saw that the other day. <laughs> oh, you've seen this? Yeah. Uh, Smokey, go ahead, take it away. <laughs> happy Chanukah. No <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's too... Chanukah is. Is there volume? But Turn it all the way Chanukah up. Happy Chanukah, because they said so. <laughs> anyway, God bless you, babe, and enjoy Chanukah. <laughs> so I was like, yo, Smokey, you've been on this earth for long enough. You've never heard Hanukkah? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> Ever? Happy Chanukah. <laughs> like, this man's been around. He's lived the life. He's not. He's been in the music industry. I mean, my God, he per- certainly crossed paths with a lot of Jewish people. Chanukah. Chanukah. Uh, to be fair... <laughs> Yeah, that is phonetic. They they don't make it very easy with the spelling thing, considering there's like three official spellings of Hanukkah. I agree. It's Maybe, so annoying yeah. how it's done because like that. Because in Hebrew you say Hanukkah, right? But here you wouldn't say that. So yeah, that, I feel like it's easier to just say Hanukkah and not even try with the C. Uh, don't attempt the, the. No, we don't do skip that. The, here. Yeah. No, we don't do that. Yeah. Just but, Hanukkah. People from Israel probably think that's the way to spell it because they're thinking Hanukkah. Because right. we, I would it say in sense. America, we say it with an H, like right. ha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hanukkah. Yeah. Hanukkah. Oh, Chanaka. Oh, Chanaka. No idea. Chanuka, Chanuka. <laughs> Come light the puka. <laughs> anyway, shout out Smokey. Uh, we love shout out Smokey. Ben Shapiro's in the house. Um, oh, is he? He's reading more. Uh, provocative language uh, lyrics. <laughs> no way. He's done it again. Why is he doing this again? <laughs> he's has to be done. You think he's baiting? I live... Yes. Oh, yeah. he, he mentions that he's like, for all you leftists who are watching oh, okay. this meme, he goes, "Whores in his house. There's some whores in this house." Listen, I don't, I don't think it even has to be leftist, Ben. I mean, this is just good shit. <laughs> Happy to have it for real. <laughs> Look at this: Logan Paul and Ben Shapiro, 10 million views. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Boy, well, look what I've done. I, 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 I can't live with myself reading it, and I can't live with myself not reading it. So for all those who uh, are, are watching this now on the left, this is me reading the lyrics to... This is coming from your own house, brother. You know what I mean? Don't put this on us. Pound Town, because it is the worst thing ever written, and it is hilariously bad, and I can't stop myself from laughing. Okay, you ready? Here we he go. He likes it. I'm out of town. He does like it. With my round. He's pretending. My I, here's the, it's supposed to be over. The, I haven't seen the lyrics, but it's silly. It's supposed yeah. to be over the top. Yes. That's, it's fun. Yes. Ben. Fun. You ever heard of it? Dork. <laughs> she pink. My booty hole brown. We're now doing color descriptions of bodily orifices. Okay, Ben, but the booty hole is brown. Why not? Unless you would you bleach your asshole, Ben? That's, Why not? That's Bring awareness to, to brown holes. Yeah, brown town. Rolo Tony Brown Town. Get yourself some more at the door. <laughs> my booger is green, my True. earwax orange. True. But nothing rhymes with orange. That's not true. Eminem taught me porridge. So good. <laughs> Door hinge. Door hinge. <laughs> orange. Porridge. I had my orange porridge on the hand. She. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Where's the N words? I'm looking for the hose. For the hose. Quit playing, N word. Come suck a b- toe. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's funny, Indeed. Ben. Indeed. And he knows well it. Said, well said. That's why it's just like he can't even like pretend to be outraged. About yeah. It. You know what I mean? Is is trying to get the clicks. Well, look at yeah. the title. This song has 17 million views, and I'm disturbed. Wow. He wants this to be memed. <laughs> exactly. He's a big. That was a big hit for him mm-hmm. when he did the Cardi B thing. It's true. That was epic, though. Hmm. One, he's he's become Indeed. aware it's Indeed. not it's not working. All right. Well said. Well said. Pound Town just left Pound Town with my N word. He took a <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, that N word. <laughs> a <laughs> down. Yes. Why are you bleeping, bro? <laughs> what, how are we supposed to meme this when you're bleeping the good part? Yeah, oh. true. Yeah, that N word. And it just continues along these lines. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, and my, my favorite part of this. Oh, yeah, that N word is a really good Ben drop. <laughs> yeah. uh, is where she actually opens applications for a stepfather for her child. That's my favorite part is where, where she like opens the resumes oh, up. No. She's like, it's a social commentary, dude. Black families, <laughs> Ben. Oh, no. Uh uh-uh, uh. <coughs> I'm out here in Miami. Again, remember, there, the NAACP has put a travel warning on Miami for black people. So I don't even know how she's living out down here in Florida. I just don't know. What? I mean, obviously what? she's in. The fuck is? 
The NAACP has put a travel advisory for black people traveling to Miami. Is that what he said? That's the claim. What I mean, year is it? I don't know what he's Indeed. trying to I mean, uh -uh. I'm going to look I'm, up what he's talking is about. It, is this the green book? Oh, what's travel happening? Travel advisory. Out here in Miami. Again, remember, there, the NAACP has put a travel warning on Miami for black people. Yes. So oh, I don't even know how she's living out. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, here. The NAACP Board of Directors issued a formal travel advisory for the state of Florida. The travel advisory comes in direct response to Governor DeSantis' aggressive attempt to erase black history and to restrict diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in Florida schools. So it's the whole state. It's not just Miami. Right, I guess that's what And I think means. it's just because it's not that serious. It just sounds like they're saying it's a DeSantis political is a statement. bitch. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not wrong about that, Ben. I hope you're right. They're right. Down here in Florida. I just don't know. I mean, obviously, she's in serious danger in Pound Town. She says, uh-uh, I'm out here in Miami looking for the hoochie daddies. Where are they at? Where are the N-words? Get that rat. All right. I'm over you, Ben. I'm done playing with you. Shut up. <laughs> the color, of, the, the color of, your, of your booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, that's Yo, fair. oh, no. Elon Ma's upset, you guys. This is not good. Elon Ma, wow, I haven't thought of that. that yeah, Elon Ma. Elon Ma. Little Ma. freak in a while. Uh, 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 Elon Ma. Uh. Oh, Give yeah. it to you. <laughs> he looks pissed. Go fuck up, you song. Oh, I see. Black me, me, this money. Nice. Hip hop, bro. Money. No money. No money. No money. Oh, the Bob Iger takedown. Oh, no. Holy shit, dude. Wow. That looked like real Go cash. Fuck up. Didn't it? You saw. Yeah. That looks like real money. Uh huh. So he's just rolling pretty heavy. I mean, it's, no money. It's $300, right? No, it's a stack, bro. Oh, is it a whole stack? Look. Money. No. It looks like there's oh, yeah. a pretty significant. It could be fake, could be fake too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. it's China. I don't think you, you can get it. You, you want some authentic fakes? You can. You know what I mean? Some authentic fakes. I heard they sell those in you, on. Go. Fuck. Uh, in Jade Country. Yeah, is that Jade you're, Country. You're trying to allude to. Yeah, see. kind of. Uh, well, our heart goes out no to you, Yilan Ma. Um, Jay Shetty diss track dropped. Um, oh, shit. Our boy answered the call. Yep. I t promised him, I said, if you make it another diss track, I'll play it. <laughs> this is from uh, Jay Del Dilla, was it? Nope. Fella. Jay Fella. Jay mm. Fella. Oh. Jay Dilla is a real, yeah. or that's an established person, right? Hey, fellas! <laughs> <laughs> so he, I don't know Shout if you out. know. Uh, Ethan. <laughs> hey, fellas! Hey, fellas! Jay Fella wrote Fellas, the, this is what we got down, going on over here. Take down that was beautiful. We yes. loved it. Yes, yes. <coughs> Jesus. Ooh. Hello. That's what I'm saying it's not right. I've been trying to take these right. next and stuff, and I don't know. It's not getting better. Nothing's been helping yeah. me either. Maybe you should see your doctor. <laughs> We're done. GG. We're all getting sick. No, I don't think I'm contagious no, I'm right just, now. I'm, everyone is a little bit sick. I've it's been like this for a week. Yeah, I'm good now. No, no, I'm not I, this past that. weekend I was, but uh, we were all been we feeling feel, a bit I sick. feel yeah. solid now. We're just oh, worried about the live show curse after I last know. year. Fuck, dude, I do yeah. not want to get sick. The somebody. power of positive thinking, everyone. We're all going to be healthy. Our... We're all going to be healthy. <laughs> One of our family members just found out they have COVID. Oh, no. Not in our house, but... Sister-in-law. But we're like, oh, um, that we see the every curse. Weekend. We gotta watch out for that curse. Every weekend we see her. So yeah. did you see her last weekend? She got sick on Wednesday. Oh no, we didn't actually see them. We actually weekend. didn't. That was the weekend we did Woo! not see them. Yeah. They watch went to that Disney. One. That must have been where they yeah. got it. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. that'll do it. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll stay. All right, Jay Shetty. Stay punk. Away. Go ahead and and take me through this. Jay Fella, uh, super talented musician. This guy rules. Jay fell on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's hear it. Eat the 
made a call to the goons Said he's tired of seeing Shetty on the news As far as in the views, you get to pick and choose We know you got them views from them pretty baby blues Green, brown, or hazel, either way we ain't amused Never ever seen a monk in a pair of designer shoes You riding a lot of weenie, winning all of them streamies Riding your magic carpet, someone get him a genie I swear I ain't racist, my best friend's from London I know how chat gets, so don't start with the assumptions Yeah, you as cute as a button, little English muffin Make me wanna come over and have some tea and crumpets I looked around, there ain't a blemish on your name I read Life of a Monk, I was hardly entertained I hope every one of your Gucci shirts gets a stain H3, the family, you ain't fucking with the gang Yo, Jay Shetty Don't be rigging no more streamies, man <laughs> We all know the real award shows the steamies True, yeah. gang You yeah. ain't winning that, though Hell no But nope. you might H3, number one podcast That's my boy yeah. So There's more. Oh. Ethan oh, made a call shit. to the goons. Said he's tired of seeing Shetty on the news. As far as in the views, you get to pick and choose. We know you got them views from them pretty baby blues. Uh, Green, real. brown, or hazel, either way, we ain't amused. Never ever seen a monk in a pair of designer shoes. You riding True. your lot of weenie, winning all of them streamies. Riding your magic carpet, someone get him a genie. I swear I ain't racist. My best friend's from London. I know how chat gets, so don't start with the assumptions. Dude, that yeah, line yeah. is crazy. <laughs> but, that, that was a wild. Oh, that's funny. What does he mean, my best friend from London? What does that have to do? Because that's where he's from. Mm -hmm. You didn't follow. Oh, I thought all... I thought he was referring to the magic carpet as being like a racial. He was. Yeah. But then, right. but then, but he's he, saying he's not even. He's, he was preemptively. But he's saying yeah. he's from London, yeah. so don't be. <coughs> but he's still Indian. Well, it's a yeah. play on that. But grew up in London. Yeah, but you Magic Card isn't even Indian yeah. anyways, so. Right. It's Persian. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or Arabian? I mean, it's from Arabian Nights, so I guess Arabian. But. It's, it's, I was just like, yeah. Anyways, it's not Indian, Indian is the point. This dude's, he's got his, uh, the, the defense for himself already in yeah. there for the song. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty baby blues, green, brown, or hazel, either way, we ain't it's just, I looked around, it's just in here twice, by the way. Hmm? It's just looping. It's just looping. Yeah. Mm. That shout out to Jay Fella for that. We love it. I think it's also uh, important context to mention that you asked for this on Monday and this was premiered on Monday. He what? made it on Monday? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, man. He was on it. That's nuts, dude. Well, there it is. Everyone go check out Jay Shetty diss track by your boy, Jay Fella. Fellas! <laughs> Fellas! <laughs> Um, looking if there's anything else real fast at the top. I guess not. So we're we're looking good for Selena. It's we are clear to go. go for Selena. We're ready for launch. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's get educated. Mm. Are you ready, Olivia? Yeah, you ready? Ew. We're with you, Olivia. To the Thanks, end. everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. So yeah. I'm somewhat aware of uh, this. I saw some drama of it floating around. Mm-hmm. Selena started has a new boyfriend. Yes, Benny Blanco, right? Yeah. And actually, interestingly, I know him because I follow him on TikTok because he's he's actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he makes these videos where he shits on um, Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth that I like. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so they're, they're besties. Yeah, I think they're just playful. Which is interesting because Selena and Charlie also have a past. But now, uh, now, uh. He is, he looks just like a, he's Jewish, I'm assuming, right? I actually didn't do my research on that part. <laughs> he is. He's just. Uh, he's like, you know what? I did see that he was Jewish when I looked him up the other day. He's like the most wry looking ass, scruffy little fucking Jewish looking dude you can ever imagine. Um, he's Jewish, native <laughs> of Northern Virginia. <laughs> but he pulled Selena. I mean, he is a mega talent, though, and very successful. Very successful. And very funny. Yes. So with that being said, Selena, baby, bite your tongue challenge. Go ahead, Olivia. <laughs> so what's the problem? This all sounds great so far. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll get into Shh. it. So, Miss Selena, baby, bite your tongue challenge. And you're, you're a Selena, you're I'm a Gomezer. A Selenator? A Selenator. Is that I what it was? I <laughs> truly, for my whole life, have admired her. 
there there's one specific slide in here that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can. I don't like what she said. Um, so we'll get to that. I think that cringe isn't illegal, but mm -hmm. like it's on. Sometimes it's unbecoming. Oh, for mm -hmm. well, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't love what I'm seeing. Okay. Well, let's see. She's she's making waves here. People are not happy. Here's Selena. Lupus so, Queen. We love her. Yes. Lupus Queen. Yeah. She's an inspiration to all of us. With she lupus. actually queen. That is true. Entrepreneur um, too, right? She has a successful makeup line. Rare beauty. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Who also stole my sound, by the way. Like, yeah. like super successful, right? Yeah, like successful really is successful. like underselling it, isn't it? Like crazy oh, massive. Yes. Yeah. She is she hit billionaire status. Oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, she should be able to I, clear I didn't know lupus that. with that yeah, kind of She mind. did this year. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Wow. So players, Selena Gomez, we know who she is. Benny Blanco, these are some of his star studded songs. Uh, the amount his him? the amount of hits he's done with the breath of uh, artists is nuts. What do you mean he makes songs? I wasn't he following. He's, he's a, a producer. producer. Okay, gotcha. He like creates. You know how Lou does for yeah. Yeah, Austin. Yeah, Austin? yeah. Gotcha. Like that. yeah. <laughs> he's the music man. Okay, cool. So and then another player in this <coughs> is Selena Gomez Brazil 2.0. This is where all of the comments oh, no. took place. Don't fuck with the Brazil <laughs> fan account. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Justin Bieber, we know who he is. He's it's a wild look. <laughs> it is a wild look. His wife looked stunning that day. Yeah, also, she he was wore like, that. Yeah, when she wore like a gorgeous, glammed up look for mm -hmm. a launch. Yeah, for and her he strawberry plays. <laughs> was he trying to do like the, Con trying. the Kanye thing where he just is down? Although this is a quite an attention grabbing look, I have to say, where Kanye's was very like muted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he wore all black to the Met Gala yeah. when Kim, yeah, just Dickies or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, another player, us, the innocent <laughs> bystanders who have to deal with all of this now. <laughs> the, 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 the victim and all. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the we saw the real victims. The us. real victims, us. Where is David in all this? For real. Yeah, what does David think? So a quick spark notes on Selena Gomez, Benny Blanco relationship. Same Old Love was produced by Benny Blanco in 2015. That's a song about Justin Bieber. Um, wow. It was a really, really great song. He did a wonderful job. 2019, they did a collab called I Can't Get Enough. That was also, I mean, that one wasn't as successful as the first, but still, they collabed together. They knew each other. And then 2020, one year later, he collabed with Justin Bieber, and they put out this song called Lonely. And it was like a big deal for him. It was it was a shift in his career. It was during the pandemic. It was after he got for married. For Justin or Benny? Justin. Okay, yeah. This was like Justin's story of growing up and feeling lonely and being like a child star dude mm -hmm. these people go to him like for important shit. Mm -hmm. like then when it comes to music yeah so during promo for that the next slide this was a big deal i remember watching it being like fuck <coughs> you benny blanco because he was doing promo for the justin song and <coughs> someone asked him like why do you love justin bieber so much and selena had just dropped her makeup line like maybe a week prior and if you click watch this is what he said interesting mm -hmm. a lot changes in three years eh benny boy hey benny i'm boy. in your walls get out look justin is not one of those like cookie cutter pop artists like you know they're like this is my new single and here's my makeup line and he's like like justin's like yo uh i have a pimple and i have anxiety today so first and basically so down to earth <laughs> yeah um it That's just felt it? unnecessary. That's yeah. it. She had just dropped her makeup line, but and just mm, I mean, okay. do we uh, know that it's not about her? Because there's a million people dropping a makeup line. That's a stretch. At the time, it was Rihanna it's... Selena. That's it. That's yeah, and so, Rihanna hadn't made music since. Not a years. lot. Not a mm. lot. No. Uh, I mean, so there, I there were two. He's like, like Justin. Those like, were those were the those were like the two big pop stars that had done makeup lines. So I mean, yeah, yeah it's indirectly referring to her. And okay. they were broken and up at this you, time, Olivia. Oh yeah, they they did so, not yeah. like each other. And she had come out with "Lose You to Love Me." Like mm -hmm. they were against. They were not friends. Right? Let me listen again. Here's my makeup line, and he's like, no, they're like. This and Selena's Justin's been not. like criticized for being cookie cutter because I. Mean, <laughs> Mm. She's a Disney. In a good way, she, yeah, she is. Mm. Not one of those, like, cookie-cutter pop artists. Like, you know, they're like, this is my new single, and here's my makeup line. Well, hold on. What's cookie-cutter about that? Especially if there was only two with makeup lines. I don't understand the criticism. Maybe he's, like, insinuating a cash grab or something. Mm, Benny. Okay. 
That does seem like a weird, like I looked, listen, I'm not, guy's very successful, obviously knows what he's doing. I looked at his like list. All he does is work with cookie cutter pop artists. So that Justin. Come Justin's on. not one of them. Come on now. But, <laughs> yeah, come but on. J- if you're talking to him, if you're talking about Justin and you're saying <laughs> someone with a makeup line, everyone's going to assume that it's right. Selena. He should That's be aware fair. of that. Yeah. All right. Shame on you, Benny. You fucking monster. So no uh, cookies for you? Okay. All right. So now people have noticed that Benny's getting into the cooking game. He just dropped a cooking book. Selena has her infamous or her famous Selena and Chef show. I actually just learned that infamous is negatively charged. That I didn't know. I'm so sorry if I ever called you infamous. I just thought it meant famous. Um, (laughs) Notorious. You had to put that in. Well, that it's in. Famous. Yes, now I've I've put it together and I understand <laughs> it. I will never make the mistake again. Well, hold on. Notorious has a negative connotation. Infamous, I think, is mostly negative, but it can be also neutral. I believe. Okay, infamous. then her infamous show, Selena and Chef. I mean, it's a it's a little it's got a little taste of something, but I do think you can use it. Not according to oh. Merriam Webster's, my friend, having a reputation of the worst kind. Is infamous. Well, that's a hold on. Let's see, wicked, abominable. That's not good. It sounded pretty bad. I I think in uh, uh, recent times you're right. Like people kind of jokingly ref- the infamous so and so or whatever. Um, oh, okay. Using it kind of like a poking fun at somebody way. Okay, there it is, infamous. So okay, they're both cooking. Yes. So she he commented. dropped, yeah, she commented. People were like, oh, in, I think something's brewing here. She's in his comments. He's doing cooking shit. And it turned out that we were, we were all correct. Hmm. Just based on that one yeah. comment, though? No, that she, she had been liking his shit. He was liking her shit. They followed each other. Selena's mom followed him on Instagram. There was a lot of clues mm. okay. that I saw in the Selena uh, okay. Twitter. Okay. Interesting. So I saw this on Twitter. I thought it was funny. Meet Selena's opponent, a brick wall. Um, Because once they announced that they were dating, if you go to the next slide, she was all over Instagram. Someone posted, she just came out with her Christmas edition of Selena and Chef, and she said that she had a crush on someone in the show. So someone posted, I hope that um, things went well with her crush. And she was like, yay, it did. Which let everyone know, okay, she's about to announce a relationship, which she did. What am I reading here? What? Selena... Gomez commented on my post. So this is the Brazil one? No, the next one is the Brazil one. But she's commenting on fan accounts? That's kind of yeah. weird. I kn- it is cringe. Like, I wouldn't... Mm. Well, I don't know how many fan accounts I have, but, like, <laughs> I wouldn't... I wouldn't interact like that. Yeah. Especially... But she's, like, number one superstar. Which is why I am surprised that she does that. So... And then she responded, too. So she's in the thread. I love you, Queen. I hope you're happy. Hi, Queen. We love you. Thank you. The happiest I've ever been, she said. Mm-hmm. Wow. Then Pop Factions posts, uh, Selena Gomez is rumored to be dating producer Benny Blanco. She likes it. She comments facts, which I think <laughs> is so cringe. Facts. That's what she said. That she her. didn't post a photo with him yet. She just commented on Pop Factions facts. That's pretty. It's like so millennial. I'm going to die. How old is she? 31. Oh, she's pushing it. We're a bit old. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. In a beautiful, young, and glowing way, just for Instagram comments. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, this is where Selena Gomez, Brazil 2.0. Selena, this fan comment, or this fan post just posts about the fact that she confirms it, and she comments, he is absolute everything in my heart, which then obviously opened a conversation in the comments with all of her fans, and she participated in fighting with them, pretty much. Mm. Okay, but so she, what are they fighting about? He, they, it just they just don't like, like him. Good, why don't they like him? They think she's responding to comments that say like he's so ugly, girl. Like she's <laughs> choosing the like really mm. cringe comments yeah. to respond to. <clears throat> it's just weird. He's so ugly, but that's it's not. That's internet. just some weird internet troll. That's, that's just the be, internet, right? That can't be like a serious criticism of of the guy. I mean, obviously. She says he is my absolute everything in my heart, so she is riding for her man. But then, uh, this is when it goes off the rails? Yeah. So, she goes, he is absolute everything in my heart. 
then why is he the it's just someone said something about him and she says then why is he the best thing that's ever happened to me the end and then she goes yeah he's still better than anyone i've ever been with facts which is like why are we talking about our exes she publicly she sounds with so our childish in this comment yeah it just it feels <laughs> like she should not be participating in this <laughs> She goes, I don't understand. If you actually care about me, this is my happiest. If you don't, feel free to say whatever you want. But I will never allow your words to guide my life. Ever. I'm done. If you can't accept me at my happiness, then don't be in my life at all. Okay, hold on. I have no problem with anything yeah. she said. I agree with those sentiments for she, sure. I mean, the fact that she's arguing with like... It's just cringe. Yeah, like it's just cringe. small so fan, fan accounts is, is something she shouldn't do. But like, yeah. she hasn't said anything even mean. She's just saying, I like him. And... Mm -hmm. That's it, really all there is to it. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, certainly wouldn't recommend arguing with fan accounts, though. That, yeah. That's no. definitely not a path to mental wellness. <laughs> okay. Then someone commented the exact same thing that she commented on Justin Bieber's post in um, 2016. He was dating Sophia Ritchie at the time, who was underage and he was overage, so there, there are different nuances going on. But she responded to the exact same words that she responded to him, where she was like, don't be mad at your fans, they love you, stop posting if you don't want people to say things about it. Okay, so she, hold on, she left this comment on his post. She said, if you can't handle the hate, then stop posting pictures of your girlfriend. It should be special between you two only. Don't be mad at your fans, they love you. Interesting. And somebody cleverly uh, copy pasted that mm -hmm. in her comments. And she didn't realize. Right. She said, not mad. It's been six months, baby. Which I'm so happy for her. She's in a relationship for six months. That's amazing. I will always defend my friends and family and fans till the day I die. Okay, hold on. Um, I mean, again, it, she doesn't realize. Why is she responding to one? What that's, is that? Yeah, ha that's the main question here. Is <coughs> like, I'm, why, I'm concerned about her. Like, why be busy in the comments? Like, <coughs> I, I do hope she's okay. If like this mm -hmm. isn't something that she normally does, she used to like ten years ago. She used to participate in like Instagram comments, but she took a long break. I just hope that she's okay. I don't think this is a symptom of some. I think mental unwellness because she has been diagnosed with bipolar. Oh, uh, that's mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, she didn't realize that this guy was, but, but again, her response isn't no, bad still. at all. She just being, she's being fine, totally fine. But again, she looks a little silly because yeah. she didn't realize. <laughs> you can go, you, you, you go ahead. Oh, this one I thought was really funny. <laughs> No, why? Selena, you are so gorgeous. What the hell? And she just goes, I am gorgeous. I'm normal, which I love. <clears throat> Two likes. What is she doing? How many comments is she reading? She really, she did, she, <laughs> She's in she deep. went in. She's in deep. Somebody screenshotted this nine seconds after it was left. How? Because she was just in there commenting, commenting, commenting. People were just watching the nine show. Nine fucking seconds, though? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um... This criticism, I mean, I understand being like so annoyed by that. Like, oh, he's not, he's not good looking enough for you. But girl, you're 31. Let's not, let's stay off Instagram. And 31 yeah. is young. Just stay, just the comments. It feels juvenile. Mm -hmm. I mean, old enough to know not to argue with yeah. people in the comments. That's just what I mean. Yeah. Um, her choice in men. Someone said with the flat face. Lol, well, everyone did suck. That's unnecessary. But who cares? She doesn't like her exes. It's not a big deal. Right, she, it's who's just... Who's she insulting? Somebody that she's made up with? She's insulting Justin Bieber. Well, she doesn't like him. That's well known. She's allowed to do that. Yeah. Right, I guess she... Yeah. Yeah, she's she's fine to say Justin sucks. There's no problem. Yeah, I mean, Justin does suck. He does suck. Yeah, <laughs> he seems like a giant douchebag. Get her... Out of my shot. Get her out of my shot. Get her out of my shot. <laughs> Ian, don't play her like that. Ian, do you want to fight on cam? Because we can. You're causing problems what, in her real life. I don't life. know what. That was some weird glitch. I don't know what happened. Right, right, right. Fact. Ghost in the machine. Watch I, yourself. I'm normal is pretty funny, though. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. I'm normal. What is that? No idea what that even means. I'm normal. Of course I'm one of you. Normal. Okay, all right.
uh, continuing. She said, oh, sweetheart, I've been in therapy since I was 18. I know what's best for me, and I will fight till I get what I deserve. I appreciate your misguided input, but I'm growing. Don't feel free to grow with me. Just know I'm never going to be with a fuck boy ever again. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> just like calling. I, I just, when you're... Fl when you're excited about a new relationship, I just mm. think it's weird to talk about yeah. all of your other ones. Also, I, I don't know anything about Benny, Benny mm -hmm. boy, but it looks a little bit like a Benny fuck boy. boy. Like a fuck boy, you think? Yeah. I don't think so. No? He's, okay. he's a weird, creative I, goofball. Okay, I don't know anything about he, he's him. A t he's I'm, a goofball Just guy. based on the few I'm, pictures I've seen. I'm keeping my eye on it. I think that the <laughs> fact that he said something that was possibly like shading her in the past, it's like... Mm. You better treat her <laughs> incredibly because that's yeah. fucked. But um, the problem is like she's 31, as we said. If she's – these people arguing in the comments of these fan accounts are probably kids, frankly. I mean there's a good chance yeah. she's arguing with a 12-year-old or a 15-year-old. And like if or you were – 18 if, even, but still she's – Probably younger though. Yeah. There's a good chance. And like if you were in the room with a 16-year-old, would you even fucking care or – like respond to this dumb shit. You'd be like, no, you're 16. You mm -hmm. don't know anything. Buddy, I'm 16. I think okay. this is coming off of the backlash she got for the situation in the Middle East. Like, I feel like it got her nerves a little bit on the edge. And this just happened to be the perfect storm. Well, I don't know what's that. What's that context? Is that in here? Um, the, the like nail in the coffin for it. Basically, a few weeks ago, she was very wishy-washy <coughs> and like would not s stand with anybody really she, she was just anything? like i love my little sister it's really hard to like see that people are dying and like that kids Who's are dying. her little sister she has her own little sister she I'm... just like used it as like i have so much love in my heart i can't imagine what it's like to like lose someone like and what's the problem exactly with... people... people wanted her to comment on the situation and she gave a very political pr answer of like Mm. I love everyone. Can you pull it up? I yeah. want to see it. Yeah. I want to see it. She was like, I'm getting offline. I love everybody. Someone said, why are you acting like 31 is elderly? I'm not. It's just, that's an age where you We're have matured. Mature. Yeah. yeah. When did I call her old? She's, she's, she should be a matured just, a human being at 31. Her brain seems, should be there. You know? Those kind of comments seem kind of juvenile, that's all. So, I don't know what's the context of this whole thing, but I did see that yeah. she was getting heat for it yeah she said like a post i'm i'm getting it for you she said a post won't change anything and it's like but you're the most followed person on instagram <coughs> that you still have, blows my mind yeah she's number one <coughs> not you're, that she isn't a big celebrity but god damn it number like legitimately the biggest account on instagram hands down mm -hmm. is her yeah so i guess people were asking her to make a statement because i mean everybody everyone was asking everyone at the time to do that so she responded, this was a response. I've been taking a break from social media because my heart breaks to see all the horror, hate, violence, and terror that's going on. People being tortured and killed or any act of hate towards any one group is horrific. We need to protect all people, especially children, and stop the violence for good. Sorry if my words will never be enough for everyone or a hashtag. I just can't stand innocent people getting hurt. That's what makes me sick. I wish I could change the world, but a post won't. So, listen. I have no problem with this statement. This girl, she's... If you're in a sensitive state of mind, and she is the number one most followed, it, whatever you say, pro or against, you will get crucified. You will get hated and passionately hated by the most psychotic people on the internet. So I don't fucking think that she owes anybody to say a goddamn. Do you know what I mean? Like personally, I why do you need? Well, who gives a fuck what Selena Gomez thinks? Is I she agree. Political science? I agree PhD? that. A I mean, post, what the fuck does she know a about? A post it? is not gonna do anything. <laughs> like, let's have some humility. Let's like, like, not every fucking buddy. It needs to have. Not She's everyone has an informed good opinion. She's a pop. And, and knowing the limit of your knowledge on it is fucking commendable. Like you don't need like to go out there and say a damn thing. When there was the Black Lives Matter and people posted black squares, people <laughs> were made fun of for well, that you, because it's like, yeah, you're just an influencer, and a stupid <coughs> post is not going to change anything. Well, it depends what what you're posting. Like if you're posting a black square and there's nothing. Sure, in to there, make a thoughtful post, you need to be no. You need to know to what you're what? talking about. The, the to make, influence. Yeah. The like, influence to do what? To, to do to, to make a stand one way or another. But you need to know what you're talking about and to make a thoughtful post. Right. Too. And I, I like. think maybe she should have said that. Yeah. What do you mean? She would have got the same amount of shit. True. Yeah. yeah she would have got the same yeah. amount of shit. She would have better off just saying nothing, man. Because yeah. this is gonna piss people off too. And it did. 
But like right. she do we don't need everyone's fucking opinion, okay? God damn. You know, what is uh what's the line that Ch uh Chappelle? A uh, Ja Rule. Oh yeah, what is Ja Rule? Did ja do we know what Ja Rule thinks Someone about calls Israel ja. Palestine? You know, like we don't need to know what Selena Gomez thinks. And yes, she's the most followed person on Instagram. I not for her political views, for her music and for her Makeup, I, I don't know. Makeup Look, now. It, in the totality of the world where everybody's talking about this and thinking about it, I really don't think that her saying, what did you want her to say? That What what was it that, that she should have said? They wanted her to take a stand. Like, w like in, I mean, uh, in what I, way? I, I, I don't, guess people are going to get <laughs> mad either way, but either say uh, that she's in yeah. support of, of Palestine or... Or Israel, mm -hmm. whatever, whoever she's in support right, of. Right, and they want her to shoot her career into the ground. Right. Because once you take a stand, the You're others, one forever. of the sides Dude, is going to want to kill you. Dude, people right. literally... People are so ruthless about this topic. People oh, yeah. are fucking like, they are obsessed with the idea that now I'm a Zionist and I hate Palestine. Like, I'm as bad as fucking Ben Gavir mm -hmm. uh, on... And, on uh, <laughs> Yeah. Netanyahu's war cabinet like their their people do not make nuanced takes on this at least a lot of them so in my opinion I mean she's she like listen the, I don't want innocent people to get hurt what what do you, what more do you want I mean fuck you know it's just uh, I don't know at what point the war was when this happened either because that kind of yeah I mean, it was a depends. few weeks after right yeah <laughs> everything kicked off I don't know. It seems it seems silly to get mad at her for not saying it's it seems unfair. But. I think that then she shouldn't have said anything at all, because then why are you adding to a sea of saying nothing? But to me, it's like she didn't try to say anything bad here. She's just saying it's hurting her heart to see what's happening. And that's mm -hmm. just the human response. <laughs> it, every, nobody right now is happy to see what's happening. Right. And I'm, then she followed that, though, because pe there was a little bit of, there was, like, mild outrage from that, and she responded with, I sent it in chat. Okay, so it made a, oh, she responded? Yeah, she did so, a second story, where she decided she's taking a break from Instagram, she's done, she doesn't support any of what's going on. It's just like, oh, you I made this, close. why are you the victim now? Like, Well, <laughs> hold on. I don't know. I felt this like this is dramatic. not. I don't think this is a fair criticism of her. Like she's the victim. I mean, she didn't do anything. But um, this this Instagram story is so dramatic. So because she says, "I'm taking a break and deleting my Instagram. I'm done. I do not support any woke." Yeah, because she's probably being told by people that probably, you're a genocidal Zionist yeah. a pig. You're a Nazi. And because like because she didn't choose a side, <sighs> she was probably already getting so much shit for saying the most basic comment ever, just that you're hating to see what's happening. That's apparently not okay these days. You can't say a statement like that, which is crazy to me. She, she's in a sensitive mental state, probably, and she doesn't want to deal with this shit. So when she gets, says something like, I, you know, I hate to see, and by the way, I know what she means, because when I'm online, and like, especially when this was all happening, there were so many horrific, disturbing images of everything on both sides uh, happening in Gaza that happened on, in, in Israel. And it was really, really um, depressing and disturbing to see it all. And like, I t totally understand her desire to, for, to wanting to take a break from seeing that. I mean, she's, you know, and so if she be, she's being called a Nazi and a Zionist and a fucking freak and all the worst things you can imagine, uh, you know, I understand her being upset and saying, fuck it, I'm out of here. And she, by the way, what she said, it was a little dramatic, but it wasn't like mean. She wasn't being mean to anybody. She was being a little dramatic. I agree. I she's, like, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say like, yeah, I can only imagine the stress she's going through because even at a small level, you know, of course, <sighs> Ethan, you've gone through it, and also, like, me and Lena, like, on one end, like, seeing these videos, I've never seen Lena, like, just cry randomly, and this has been happening for the past few months, just mm -hmm. watching videos, because we're from Dearborn, all of our friends and family are posting what's going on in Palestine and overseas, and it's tough, and then at the same time, we're being harassed on every platform for not speaking about it, mm -hmm. and... I don't know. It's a, it's a weird conflict in my head because there is a level of uh, disappointment in not speaking on it in myself. Um, but also, it's like 
it's just, it's just a lot. It's a lot, and it's like this mind game that you're constantly playing. Dude, you're not. It's a lot. You're it's, not I'm, a fucking elected official. I'm you're having, not a political. Um, si- si- you you know right. you you're under no obligation, bro. I'm finding fucking... myself having this conversation with my mom even because she's like out of worry for me because <laughs> I've been going through it too, and she's like, um, don't say anything, don't comment. You you're just mm. gonna make yourself a target. She's actually worried about me, like something yeah. happening to me if I say something. And then at the same time, we were talking about it, and she's like, yeah, I mean. On the other hand, you do want to say something, right? Because you feel like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy and you want to say something. It's it's really complicated. But yeah. I'm not educated enough to say something worthy of of this kind of attention. I mean, it's, do it's you, not what, for me. What I'm, do you want I'm to not, say like that? Israel is I didn't in- study politics or the history or I'm not educated enough to make well, a... a a real well, listen, what do they want? You don't need to be educated to say this horrible, uh, massive loss of civilian life in Gaza yeah. is horrible and it's tragic and it's, but, but, that's but, not enough. But like, but is that what you wanted? But she didn't say that. <laughs> but she, she said, I hate that she, everyone died on, all right, the innocents I think that died. She, she it, did in a way. She said, <laughs> she, seeing innocent. I, I don't want to deal with uh, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is what I believe, though. But, like, um, by the way, I'm sorry that you guys are been going. No, it's not, it's not your. But no, I, I mean, I just, I, I, I feel I sorry. I know exactly what you mean, AB, because I'm like, it's con- it's like every day in my head, <sighs> mm-hmm. it's like, should I say something? Am I letting somebody down by not saying something? Right. But who am I to say something? I don't know anything yeah. about it. I don't know nothing about nobody. And there's there's another aspect to it in our situation specifically. Um, you know, of course, we love you guys, and you guys being from Israel, it's like right. anything we do say, they're gonna somehow weaponize it against you guys, like mm-hmm. in, in one way or another. They're gonna, or someone else, or the rest of the crew members, ignoring you guys. If we well, say something and, and yeah. they don't say nothing, then they're gonna be like, oh, what? When are they gonna speak up? Like these, they're being harassed, and they're not even Arab. Like they, are, they're getting comments all the time. Well, yeah. and people do. You, I've seen lots of people being like, how can Lena and AB stand while well, Ethan? sits there and says this shit, which again, I don't know what I said, but, uh, and but being they do a- do that already. Being able to, like, be friends with you guys here and leave here and, like, have this, like, conflict be taken away from the situation has been such a beautiful mm-hmm. experience for me, but, like, I, there's no way to talk about this without sounding stupid or ignorant yeah. or whatever, and, like, we have this privilege of being here and the conflict is taken out of the situation and we we love each other here we're like mm-hmm. family yeah mm-hmm. I, I don't know what is there to say to make somebody happy i don't even know what i'm trying to say honestly well so like i was saying is that like you don't need to be informed on anything to say the loss of life in gaza is horrific there's there is and it is horrific the amount of civilian death happening there is tragic and awful and terrible and uh saying they, that so but but that's saying what she that said. alone what will, will get the israeli side like pissed at you cuz you're not saying that there somebody something happened there yeah you you would probably have some people being like well what about happened here everybody yeah. wants to get recognition for that's the shit right. they're dealing with yeah. both sides want it I think the the thing that honestly, and it's by the way, sorry, it's not a measurement of who's getting it worse. Both sides see themselves as the victims. Objectively, you know, Gaza is getting absolutely fucking crushed on a scale that's absurdly uh, disproportionate. Like that's obvious, right? So that's worth being said. Because before people fucking run away with anything, I'm trying to say. Go, ahead. sorry, Olivia, go ahead. Um. No, 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 you're okay. I think just the the vagueness <sighs> in her post and the fact that like she's posting on the most influential <clears throat> account ever and it, she ends it with like a post won't change anything. When she could have linked some sort of fundraiser, she could have linked a source to information. Like she has people on her team that could help inform her about like ways that she can go about this with what she believes. If she want I just feel like solid 
Like I don't think she knows what she believes. It seems like I she honestly just, disagree. Yeah. I disagree. I mean, well, like I I know what you're saying, right? You she could have a big impact if she was like, "Yo, support this." I support these people and here's how you can support them. Mm -hmm. But I think that what I'm getting from her is that she doesn't really, she's not confident in pointing people one way or another because she doesn't really know. Then I think she shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, yeah. I agree. She shouldn't and have I said think anything. Now she probably learned her lesson. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure she's not going to say I mean, anything about it again. No, actually go to the next slide because this is what like actually <laughs> pissed me off mm -hmm. is someone in her comments was like, you'll be quiet about all of like people are asking you to talk about this and you're not talking about it, but you'll like go to bat and like talk to your fans and fight with them in the comments <coughs> about your God boyfriend. And she just responded with, you're right. And well, then continued on. posting about him. I'm trying to find the slide. Mm -hmm. Where the fuck did it go? Did I close it? Okay, hold on, let me open it again. And, and this is just what's going on online. Like we got to deal with it in real life too. Lena got in an accident uh, like a month ago, minor accident in a parking lot. And she got called a fucking Arab. Or That's what do you, what do you crazy. call you? He asked me if I'm Palestinian. I said no. He's like, well, what are you? I said Lebanese. And he's like, yeah, you're all the effing same. I, what a fucking piece of shit. I love how he had Trust to ask. Me. He's like, are you this one? Are you yeah. this one? Are you yeah. this one? Okay, yeah, you're all the same. It's like, what the fuck, bro? Doesn't make any sense. That's disgusting. What do you look like? What kind of dude was it? He looked like he looked a fucking dumbass. Fucking weirdo. Yeah. Weirdo, dumbass, idiot. He's really Pussy, mean. bitch. Old white guy? No, he was, uh... What, 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 you know what nationality? I think he... Well, he was... Sp uh, speaking, speaking Spanish, Spanish yeah. So. Oh, okay. But my, uh... Oh, wild card. My, uh, yeah, wild card racist. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> yeah. But oh, my barber, cool. who speaks Spanish, came out to defend Lena. He recognized yeah. her. A oh, yeah. yeah. That's a legend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. But that's horrible. Yeah, what the fuck? But obviously, you know, like Ela was saying, I love you guys. Like, there's not... And and by the way, I mean... Okay, whatever. It's not... You yeah. know, fuck off if you're going to be a little weird freak about it. We're all... It is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. You know what I mean? Um, Where were we? But yes, this I love was, you guys. Yeah, the response I do love that you actually guys. pissed Thank you. me off. And you know you can always talk to me about yeah, something. Yeah, no, I know. And yeah. and just so everyone knows, Ethan's always given us a platform. He's never ever tried to silence anything we say. He's always allowed us to speak if we want. So Yeah, and I hope that you guys feel comfortable reaching out to me privately anytime. Yeah, of too. course. Of course. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, so it ain't why it ain't. Uh, Thanks, so Abba. let's er, go. Where were we? Reach. <laughs> Okay, where were we? Uh, we? Go back to nail in the coffin. Okay, so we're caught up on the, on the, uh, that yeah, people uh. who are. So there was like a lot of anger to her at this there point. There was. Okay. But I feel like most of it came from after she announced her break, because people were like, "Why is? Why are you being so dramatic right now?" Well, another thing I'm seeing is like, <sighs> yeah, people say they go. The, with every, all these civilians dying and you're you're making yourself the victim. Although, again, I think that's a kind of a dramatic assessment. She just wanted to sp step away from the fucking internet. She didn't say she's a victim. She just, I do too, but then why why make a spectacle of your of your departure? Why not just She, she tried and she to failed. Me, to me what that. I can try to speculate, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I feel like she probably got so much shit for what seemed like the most basic human comment mm -hmm. that it made her so frustrated and she was like, I'm done with the internet, you guys suck. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's how I translate it. Listen, at the end of the day, she's a human yeah. being. She has, you know what I mean? She, she's like the most popular person on Instagram and you want her to act like royalty and you want her to act like a perfectly groomed princess who's ready to take over. But like, she's just a fucking person. Right, I wasn't she's outraged by that. I was annoyed a, by thank her you, sure. Zach. I was very, <laughs> Upset with her comment. So let's go yesterday. to the next one. Uh, her choice in men, lol, everyone did suck. Oh, sweetheart, did we read this one. Yeah. And, this one. Okay. You want to you read yeah, it? Yeah, so she said, she's out here doing the absolute most under this post <coughs> over some fuck-ass relationship, but when asked to speak with, a, but asked to stand with the people of Palestine, all of a sudden she has to take a social media break. Oh, call drops. And she just goes, you're right. That and, was not a good response. Right. Why'd she it's do like, that? Why? Why? And then she continues. I included her Instagram stories too. She <laughs> continues posting about her new boyfriend, like and and memes of her Disney Channel like mm. show. So it's it's not that she's saying you're right. You're actually you are correct, and she's stepping away. Like 
she's, she said so one more time. Let me I think this, this is being sarcastic. Yeah, I think this is mean. Yeah, she's yeah, she, yeah, she's being sarcastic. She's out here doing the absolute most under this post over some fuck ass relationship. But when Tuck asked to stand with people of Palestine, all of a sudden she had to take a social media break. Um, yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, that was super unnecessary. Yeah, it's fucked up. I mean, she's she's getting a little like, yeah. She needs to close her phone. I've been there. I know what she's going through. Mm-hmm. I've been there. It's when you you lose your fucking mind on social yeah. media sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like you're you're just fucking up, and you know it. Yeah. Uh, she said, "Never trolling. I'm leaving Insta for a while until I have work again." What does that mean? She's, she can like work when she drops she... singles and has, but she she broke the break an hour later. Oh, she's back. <laughs> yeah, oh, she no. started posting on her story again. No, uh... she's doing the quartering, leaving Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just stand up for what I believe in. I have no shame in doing that. I love my fans more than anything in the world. Okay, I mean, again, it's just a weird non-statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, saying I stand up for what I believe in. Like, do you? Is weird because the accusation is that yeah that she didn't make a she, sense well, yeah. and yeah and so so it's just a little bit like I guess yeah missing the criticism or not caring about it. I don't know so these were her stories from yesterday um, <coughs> she posted the one on the right is like her hard launch they're together pick and then after all of her comments she posted. Just a reminder how much I appreciate and love every one of you. That was after all the fighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then if you go to the next one. Yeah, but ultimately she didn't say anything terrible. So like, you know, for, on her end, I understand her being like, what, what is happening right now? Like I'm being like can- canceled, quote unquote, like super harshly. And I mean, you know, I understand where she's, I guess, coming from to an extent. Her Insta stories were wild, continued. Uh, she's posting rings, the Wizard of Wavery placed bloopers. Mm-hmm. So what is wild about these? It was just like, <laughs> she doesn't normally post this constantly and she was fighting with her fans. She was just very active on social media and like said she was gonna take a break and then she's came back. back and posted a photo or like bloopers of Man. wizards and then her new <laughs> ring. And it's like, she's never this, this giving right it's possible that she fans. is going through something i mean if she's bipolar i know yeah. i think be, yeah. i think something's happening i hope that she's okay yeah this certainly could be like a manic thing i don't yeah. know you know um and certainly there are triggers for episodes too which yeah being then, called a nazi by a bunch of fucking of your fans is probably pretty upsetting <clears throat> And then the next one is, oh, look, it's a B for B <laughs> quiet. What Benny got her. That was just, that was a little. That's I saw that commentary. One. Yeah. Um, <laughs> B is Benny. Mm-hmm. She got a ring. People, I also thought this. Justin got her a ring, like a very famous ring that everyone still talks about to this day with a J. Mm. And she posted about it. Then Haley got a J tattoo with a star. Selena then got a star on her finger and now she's posting with a B. So people are just like, mm. fuck, I need an initial. And it, the next one, the next slide's the last one. I need someone um, with an H from you quick. <laughs> the next slide's the last one. It, uh, it's from Sheehan. People found it. <laughs> no. Oh, is it, was this a joke? No, they probably made that after. <laughs> you think? Posted. Yeah. Wait, hold the phone. That's that, their whole thing, right? Is like ripping off. <laughs> yeah. Other oh, man. It is all over Twitter that people are like, Damn, There's no way he Shein. bought her a $10 no, shoe ring. I mean, there's Selena no way to confirm where he Those got are it, real diamonds. He's rich as fuck. Yeah. I know. That's why yeah. people are like, let's talk about it. But then why would she no, make a B? They ripped that off. They ripped yeah. it off for people to buy it for $10. That's crazy, though, how fast they were. They do work fast. That has to be it. That's crazy, though. The Sheen is making them all look bad, man. They're fucking up. We got to sue Sheen for defamation or something. Oh, they have like a million lawsuits. <laughs> really? Yeah. Awesome. Because they, they steal they everything. They steal like with no shame. I wonder if they're making enough money to survive. I think they do. The massive lawsuits. You should look up how big they are. I think are. the owner's a billionaire. They're like one of the biggest companies. That means, what is their margin? Because their stuff is so cheap. Like, how do they do it, man? Sheen, uh, 
Valuation. In 2022, 100 billion, more than H&M oh. and Zara combined. What the fuck? More than H&M and Zara combined. Hold on. Sheen reportedly s- seeking a 90 billion valuation in IPO. Okay, so they're seeking. Yeah, it's scary. 90 billion? Holy shit. Yeah, you can pay off all those settlements. <laughs> okay. Interesting commentary here. <laughs> you want to break this down? I can do it. Oh, we don't like this. We're skipping this part. <laughs> Getting out of it. So that's that's it. That is it. Okay. Okay. Man. Man so, so are we happy for know. the relationship part? Of this? <laughs> if she is happy, I am so <laughs> she happy said for she her. is. She says that she is. Yeah. I hope that she's okay. I really hope that she's okay. Okay. I think she should stop fighting with fans in the comments. Yeah, I think, that's I'm, for sure. I'm happy or sad or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I support you. I'm not reading all Sorry that. Sorry, that happened. Things. I'm not reading all that. Um, do you guys I, want a palate cleanser? I, got, I finished the uh, Nook. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I want a. Oh. Palate. Yes. Yes. Yeah, are those, yeah, where are those sandwiches, by the way? Because we, I have to like leave soon. Uh, uh, I'll look into it. We're gonna be here fifty, four fifty. <laughs> Or fifty. Oh, that's ten minutes. Okay, we're probably have to take it to go though. You know. mm-hmm. This is it, you guys. The mashup of the season, Christmas music. Everybody is buzzing about this Anuk uh, collaboration. It's huge. Hello, Merry Christmas. Lord Christmas, I give you my heart. I'm the way my train <laughs> to get a name way. This year, to sell me from tears. I give you so much. Nation, nation, nation. Let Christmas to carry my heart. Oh, the very next day, you give it so away. This year. To sell me from tears, I give it to someone special. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, he's sticking around. Oh. Love that about him. Just stay. <laughs> he just doesn't go anywhere. Yep. <laughs> Hold your smile. He's Anuk? doing an idol animation, man. Anuk, he hello? He the default. <laughs> Anuk. There he is. Hello. Anuk. Anuk. He's got the Christmas spirit in him. Anuk. Anuk. Oh, Hello. that was good. That was special. Wow. That was wonderful. Thank you, Cam. Yep. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check out some of the donies. Laura said, I've got a phlegm cough for two months and nothing helps. I do have an inhaler now, which helps sometimes. Really? They couldn't find a cause for it. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. It's like super phlegmy. Ugh, it's horrible. Message your doctor. I know it's like uh, when I once I message my doctor it starts this whole chain reaction of bullshit I don't want to do <laughs> so here's 10,000 blood tests you need to do exactly <laughs> like I appreciate how thorough they are but like I don't know it's just not I don't know if it's that serious yet right there. transformative says um, just came back from Midwest F- fur fest Ela was seeing the furry family wearing a lot of Teddy Fresh. Really? Oh man, we love our fur Shout family. Shout out, furry family. <laughs> I love the fur family. We're rooting for fur you. <laughs> you know why? Was it um, Andrew Callahan that we talked about fur con with? Yeah. Because he actually brought a perspective that made me see them differently. He oh, really yeah, humanized yeah. them in a yeah. way that I thought was really helpful. Right, I remember that. Yeah. Just like they're that the community seems really nice and wholesome and uh good for for them. Uh, Sansa Bar says five gifted subbies. Thank you, legend. <laughs> Sansa Bar says I'm back. Thanks, Dan. What does that mean? You banned them or something? No, uh, they were having some uh, they were having like a weird glitch on YouTube and I helped them uh, mm. help them out. Thank you for that generous and, donation. Uh, and, and the glitch was that they couldn't donate and so then they uh, thanked us by donating a big oh, there you go. So thanks. Thank thanks, you, man. Zanzibar. We love Shout that out. about you. Thank I'll you. Pika Pumpy. Pumby. Hi Ethan, can you please give a shout out to Megan, Jalil, and Boris? We're Australian. So if you want to say it. In our native language, you can say, mm-hmm. Good day, mate. How you going? How you going? <laughs> no, 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 I'll say it like this. Um, hey, Megan, no, no. 
Good day, mate. How Good you day. going? Good day, Megan. Good day. Having a barbie? How you going? Good day, Megan. Having a barbie with Boris? <laughs> Turned him gay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I you. would die to go to Australia. <laughs> I mean, I we can make it happen. We literally cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would take, it would, we'd have to wait a while. We have to wait like ten years before we can take any any. Australia's pretty serious trip. too. That's a long ass flight. Yeah, that's like as far yeah, along yeah. as a flight as you can take. Pretty much. One of the longest, at least yeah. from from LA. I went and stayed with uh, exchange students. You in did Australia to Australia when I was in eighth grade. Yeah, they stayed with me when I was in seventh grade. Did, did you, you love guys, it? I loved it. Did you guys have a Barbie? Yeah, we had a few bobbies. <laughs> a few bobbies. Did you eat any bush bobbies. meat? Did I eat any uh... bush meat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zesty. <laughs> Delicious. Bush meat. Uh, dysphoria, backlash, <laughs> ah. the figure, fire. To people uh, ratio, saying, uh, uh, come to Australia, I will in about like 10 years when the kids grow up. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Emily says the blue dude is blue because of how deeply inbred he is. There's a whole family. Look up blue people of Kentucky. I'm on it. I was sick. Hold on. Blue people argument? of Kentucky. I'm What's blue. Your da da dee da da. When that, when that song came out, they were so stoked. They're like, yo, that's for that's fucking hmm. speaking to my heart. I'm blue. Da da dee da da. <laughs> da dee 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 dee. I found a. Uh, this is just an illustration. There's a Wikipedia <laughs> article about it. Uh, Wait, why are we blue back on this? Fugazi. Somebody donated. Said uh, he's a Fugazi. inbred. But the hold blue on. Fugazis. I don't see any other images than this guy. He's but, the only one that made it out from the forest. From the forest. This one looks edited. That can't be real. No, it's real. He looks like. But that. why does it look? Because here it looks totally different. Maybe it's the studio. It's the lighting. It's lighting and stuff. Because this is straight Smurf shit. It's lighting. That's what people call him as Papa Smurf. I sent a photo. Let's see. We love it about them though. Oh, here they are. <laughs> this is the rumor, the fabled uh, right. silver oh, wow, consuming yeah. tribe. <laughs> the Aboriginals. <laughs> They're blue. <laughs> it's a special bunch of people. Oh my lord. Um, I wish I was blue. Da, da, dee, da, you, not, you weren't here for this? Is this no, before you came no. out? Oh. We, gotta get we need to blue. make you an avatar. Oh, we gotta make you yeah. blue, dude. We gotta blue, blue you. You gotta Drew. watch the way of water, dude. Well, you gotta do an avatar oh, yeah. episode. I'd love that. Yeah. I yeah. love dressing up. That was so fun. We gotta do that again. <laughs> Where we just wear Avatar for no reason? You didn't even know we were doing it. It wasn't for no reason. Uh, it wasn't for no reason. Well, because you guys were trying to get me to watch that dumbass yeah. movie. Didn't yeah, work. Whoa, did. whoa, whoa. Didn't work, <laughs> suckers. The movie of the year, dude. I You're did love it, lost, bro. I did love it. Not so. the movie. The bit. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. I refuse to. Same yeah. here. Funky Ooh. Miss Wimpy says, Hey, crew, I despise being this person, but I have to ask you for help covering a hospital bill. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> button. <laughs> <sighs> okay, how much? How much are we talking? I don't want to do this. I'm sorry, Funky. I love you, but I don't want to do this. Charge back. Get the ten dollars back, please. True. Charge back, YouTube. Um, I don't know what to say. It's just it gets it gets touchy. I made it. I said I would stop doing that, but I want to support people in other ways that is more organized and uh, official, mm. whatever that means. But um, <laughs> I mean, listen, how much are we talking about here? <laughs> you you should need to tell me. Are we talking about five hundred? We talking about thousand? Are you going to send me a in bill America, for twenty thousand dollars? America, you never know. But that's what I'm saying. The people fact that she doesn't say the numbers concerning me. Because <laughs> I don't, don't want to be like, yeah, I'll help you out. And then she sends us like a $15,000 right. invoice. Who sent the donation? Take it from their salary. <laughs> True. Who sent that? <laughs> me. That's being dot. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I did give, I said, I, listen, I explicitly did give you instructions to put every donation there. Yeah. And did that, thank you. I had, I was planning on not sending it, but then. <laughs> no, you did, you did good. Oh, I want to acknowledge people. everyone. <clears throat> Jennifer needs help with our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Deduct from Elon. <laughs> Funky Miss Wimpy, message one of the mods and send me the invoice. I'm not making any guarantees to you at all. I'm not even saying I'm going to do anything for you. I just want to see the bill. Thank you. 
Funky Miss Wimpy. You guys got that? Five thousand Dongarn. Oh, it's two point five k. How do you know? They just said. It. Oh, they already said it. She said it's two point five k. I know. I'm so sorry. Send the bills. And nobody do this anymore. What is? What are we treating? <laughs> what happened? Every time you do this, I get five hundred messages <laughs> of the sad. Like I'm dying of cancer. I know. I don't I know what to do. It's up. That's the and it's problem. like I, I. It's not that I don't have empathy, but I. I wish you guys could see my inbox. It's like an overwhelming amount. Like, well, I get those. Why emails. are y'all dying in the <laughs> audience? Didn't I, listen to Brian Johnson. <laughs> I got. Stop dying. <laughs> stop dying. Um, I get those emails too, Dan. Yeah. And and it is. It's really, frankly. Depressing. Yes, that's what I'm saying, and, and not that it, like obviously the person. <coughs> I want to help all of you. We love you all. Has it way worse? I'm not trying to uh, compare that, but uh, just to give you a sense of scale, it's like we can't help everyone, so it just it feels unfair to just randomly do it for some and not others, and so yeah. Funky Miss Wimpy, send me the invoice. I'm not making any guarantees. Just send it, okay? Now leave me alone. <laughs> Five thousand dongarn. All right. What kind of procedure was it? Was it an elective? That's what I'm. You know wondering. what I mean? Are we talking? Did you get an elective surgery? You 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 know you get your nose strained. What are we doing? And what have you done to not die? And exactly, what's your diet like? Have you been sleeping? How properly? much sleep you getting? Red yeah. lasers. Red Just laser therapy. Stop you dying. With that? It's true. These are all. Send all that information, Funky, yeah. <laughs> so I can gauge how deserving you are. <laughs> Um, Hal JJ says, please say happy birthday to my little sister Ava. We love you, Ava. Happy birthday. Babe Nash. Happy birthday. This man is boo because of incest? There's really, um, says Caitlin, con uh, uh, conflicting facts on the blue man. Mm. Incest causes people to be blue? Since when? Incest. It needs to go probably pretty far. Well, in the, in that... But they, like, the royal family used to be inbred, like, generations. <laughs> no, I never see any blues. It's a cover-up. They're, 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 they're kind of purple. They're purple. They're blue. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Somebody, uh, somebody asked, I did say this already, but I'll say it again. Megski says, Elo, will there be a TF sale at the live show this year? Yes, there will. Yes, a big, big time. One. <laughs> big time, big time. Um, it's a win-win. We get to clear some space. We oh. get to sell you guys stuff for super cheap. This one comes from ABH3 Podcast. He says, I want to get my mom a TV for Christmas. Send that shit. <laughs> Is that a real donation or did you just fake it? That's a real donation. Thanks, All man. Right, Thank you for supporting us. So if you can put $5 on top of that, please. <laughs> send us the link. What kind of TV are we talking about? <laughs> I actually I actually gave my mom a TV last year for Christmas, but it was the TV that my dad gave me and my brother to keep at our house, but we didn't need a TV. We secretly gave it to my mom because they're divorced. You regifted? Uh -huh. I regifted. Was yeah. it? Did you use oh it? My God. No, I didn't use it. I, oh. I had the intention to give it to my mom, but <laughs> well, my dad fine. was fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't negotiate that in the divorce settlement. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, uh, Avery, mega awesome nerd, says Ethan, please pay off my student loans. I have a small don. Uh, Mm. A donation of two hundred eighteen thousand, oh, please. God. Thank Jesus you, bro. Christ. Appreciate it, gang, gang. Oh my God! <laughs> Thank you for the donut, Dasha. She donated five dollars and said, "Can I have five dollars?" Hmm. Somebody asked for twenty-five bucks for some weed. <laughs> for weed? That, yeah. I mean, shit. That's as good a reason as any, to be honest. Send the invoice. This isn't real, is it? What type of oh, that's, video that's the prince. About? That's the king. Yeah, that is the real. Yeah, this photo. is this Uncover. is the uncolor corrected version. This is what incest <laughs> looks like. Do you see these fingers? That's the type of shit that you can expect. Blue. I mean, what the fuck? What's your argument? That What's family your argument? has a, a rare recessive gene that makes their skin blue. Is what I'm saying. What? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. What else does it's it actually do? Actually, a blood disorder that mm -hmm. causes it. Usually when there's stuff like that, there also is like a other side effects of the condition. It, what, mm -hmm. what is it called? Let's read about it. Uh, it is called <laughs> methemoglobinemia. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Here, I'll send you the link. <laughs> Joy says, can I get some luck wish upon me for my crochet market this weekend? Good luck. We wish you all the best out there. Good crochet luck. your heart out, girl. Tactical noob tube. My mom wants a yacht. Gimme. Gimme. A yacht? Fuck. It's interesting. You're not asking for millions now, man. Here is a, uh, here it is. Let's learn about this. I'm just waiting for the sandwiches, by the way. 
I see. I mean, the show's over. It's definitely over. Yeah. yeah. Methem, meth, methemoglobinema. Huh. Why is there a vial? Of, oh, is this blood? Is this blood? Chocolate brown. Oh, chocolate brown blood uh, due to the metho megalobamina. Oh, That's fucking sick. It makes your blood brown. It can't. It can't bind to oxygen, <laughs> which is what produces the the red color. So because it can't uh, bind, it's, it's that bluish. Is that a that, problem? Isn't that know. fatal? Yeah. yeah. How did like, they? How, how did they, they live? <laughs> Doesn't blood need to carry oxygen in it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, person. clearly, that that one guy was pretty old, so I, I guess it's manageable <laughs> somehow. Your symptoms may include headache, dizziness, shortness of breath, nausea, poor muscle, coordination's blue-colored skin. Oh, there's a name for it: cyanosis. Cyanosis. Now we're getting closer to the blue skin thing. Right. Complications may include seizures and heart arrhythmias. Hold on, now we're getting one level deeper because we really well, care about the blue skin. There, just click on the blue skin link right next to it. Wait, there was? Careful. Yeah, back on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Oh, this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay, I guess it's a little blue. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a change of body tissue color to a bluish purple hue as a result of decrease in the amount of oxygen bound to the hemoglobin. Uh, so maybe they, there's still some oxygen, yeah, but there's just a reduced amount. Right, you only need 10 to 20% to see signs. Mm. Slightly uh, blue skin. Oh, wow. Cyanosis is apparently usually in the blood tissue covering the thin skin, including mucous membranes, lips, nail beds, and earlobes. Also, the the genitals is that thin mucous membrane. I wonder, this dick is probably super blue. For mm. sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, <laughs> some medications may cause discolorations such as Medications containing, oh, here it is, an, uh, silver, amiodoron or silver. Furthermore, Mongolian spots, large birthmarks, and the consumption of food products with blue or purple dye can also result in the bluish skin tissue. Jesus. How much blue dye are you eating? Uh, appropriate physical examination and history taking is a crucial part, yada, yada, yada. Okay, we love, we love our, our blue people, don't we? Yeah, it's a good I'm time. Blue. They are the best. We love them. We love them all. We love them. Love groups of blue men. I mean, usually people that are blue are dead, so this is good. This is there's living blue people, and we love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. We love our living blue people. They are terrific, tremendous people. Fine people on both sides, the living and the dead. The Papa Smurf guy we're looking at, I saw, unfortunately, has passed. So may. Oh no. Rest in peace. Rip to the goat. Damn. My dude. So if he dies, then his shit must get really blue. For real. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm blue. All right. I got, I, uh, uh, is there an ETA on those, Lena? Uh -huh. Where the hell I are... think she's grabbing them right now. Okay. Uh, it's like it has these arrived. deliveries are just so brutal. I mean, we ordered this at like three, didn't we? It's because they're big orders. That's the only Yeah. Is it that big? It's there's like twelve people here. Yeah. Okay, but like it may take then maybe it takes five minutes or ten minutes instead of five minutes to make the sandwich. <laughs> this <it's>... is big. <laughs> uh, all right, fucking hell. Listen, guys, have a terrific weekend. I love y'all. Thanks for being here. Thank you to our members. You guys mean so much. This is next week is our last week of shows. Get hyped. Do we hyped. have a Friday show? We do. Okay. So we're doing a full week and then a bonus episode. On Sunday night for everybody. Wow. And the show starts, I believe, at 7? Well, we'll talk about it more next uh, week. Yeah, the show starts at uh, 7 o'clock Pacific. And also, just a reminder that down in the description and pinned in the chat right now is the survey for the Steamies. Get your votes in there, Get people. Your votes in. Oh, it's your voice we want to hear. Well, how oh, many that's votes right. that, Ian? Is, did it go up? Yeah. He's checking... We are. Right now. Go oh, out vote, and vote, vote, people. Vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain. That's mm -hmm. what they say. Rock the vote, people. Your vote, the vote never they mattered before. Dumps. Every vote matters. Stay in line, babies. Hmm? I'm saying their vote never mattered this much before. No. Uh, we've gained about 30... Or we've gained about 5,000 votes this episode. Get Two were not even close, though. We're at 35,000. Last numbers. year was nuts. Yeah. All right, we'll see. Maybe as the, as people watch this episode.
Yeah. We'll get there. We'll keep sure Regardless, it's, it's a statistically significant amount of votes. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. We'll be here three shows and then a special live performance on Sunday for everybody. We'll be live broadcast on the channel, but we'll talk more about that uh, uh, next week. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. Thank you. Have a good weekend.